Brand disclaimer, the views and opinions expressed by individuals on this platform, the callers plus invited guests are their own. The information you hear does not reflect the overall views of all parties associated with this brand. We encourage everyone to research all things heard live or via archive for edification purposes. Discretion is advised. Don't touch that dial. You're now listening to the Big Talk Free Radio. Help keep the show on the air. If you want to help, you can send your donation to PayPal. The email is you at gmail.com or through Cash App, dollar sign, Sal Showtime. Thanks for your support. Yes, sir. All praises to the Most High in Christ to deliver this message. First thing I'm going to bring out is that this uh, virgin birth or immaculate conception is a heresy and a false doctrine. First scripture I'm going to go to is Acts 2, verse 29. It states in 30, it says, Men and brethren, let me freely speak unto you of the patriarch David, that he is both dead and buried, and the sepulchre is with us until this day. Therefore, being a prophet and knowing that God had sworn with an oath to him, now this is what I want to show. That this is an oath that was sworn about Christ being of this line. I'm going to read on. Then it says, sworn with an oath to him that of the fruit of his loins. What is the fruit of someone's loins? The sperm, so you can understand. Okay? According to the flesh. What does according to the flesh mean? Meaning you have flesh, right? Flesh and blood. Okay? Then it says, he would raise up Christ to sit on the throne, on his throne, okay? So this proved that Christ was of the seed of David. Now, I'm going to go here. I'm going to let Christ tell you out of his own mouth. We're going to go to Revelation 22, verse 16. It says, to testify unto you these things in the churches. I am the root and offspring of David. Now, this is Christ talking to himself. So if he tell you, who are you to speak over Christ saying that he's not of the seed of David? Okay, he tell you he's an offspring. What is an offspring? Go look it up. Okay, it tell you it have offspring is something that come forth out of something else. Animals have offspring. Insects have offspring. Men and women have offspring. Okay, so now I'm gonna go and get into the bloodline. We're gonna go to Isaiah 11 verse one. We're gonna trace this bloodline. I'm gonna show you the tactics that people use to try to twist you up and not believe the virgin birth. We're gonna go to uh, Isaiah 11 verse one. We're gonna trace the bloodline. It says. And there shall come forth a root out of the stem of Jesse. Who is Jesse? Jesse's the father of David. Okay. Now, let's trace David, I mean Jesse, in Matthew. Let's see if he's in the generation of Jesus Christ. And the word we want to get out of generation is gene. Okay. So let's go to Matthew, the first chapter. Let's find Jesse. Okay. In, that, in the generation of Jesus Christ. We're going to go to Matthew 1, verse 6. And it states... And Jesse begot David. What is Jesse doing in the generation of Jesus Christ? How is Jesse, how is Jesse linked to Christ? According to sperm, the seed. Okay? So let's look and let's find David. Okay, we're going we're gonna to read on. We're going to read that again. And Jesse begot David the king. And David, there's David. He's in the generation of Jesus Christ. How are they linked? According to the seed. Okay? So now we're going to go and get Joseph. Because there's a lie going around saying that Joseph was Christ's stepfather. Could you believe that? Could you believe that? So let's, let's trace Joseph. First of all, I'm going to get Joseph in the prophecies. We're going to go to Micah right quick. Get Micah. Hold on, let me get it. We're going to get Micah, and we're going to trace him according to prophecy. And then we're going to get, this is Micah 5, verse 2. It says, But thou, Bethlehem, Ephetah, though thou be little among the thousands of Judah, Yet out of thee shall he come forth unto me, that is to be ruler in Israel, whose going forth have been from of old, from everlasting. This is talking about Christ. Christ came out of Joseph. Now we're going to go on and get some more. Now we're going to trace that to Matthew 2, verse 6. Because prophecy is something that's written that's going to come to pass. So let's, let's, let's track this prophecy in Matthew. We're going to go to Matthew 2, verse 6. Okay? And it states, And thou Bethlehem, in the land of Judah are not are not the least among the princes of Judah, for out of thee shall come a governor that shall rule my people Israel. Okay? So who came out of that land of Bethlehem? David. 
I mean, uh, Joseph. So let's prove that. We're going to go to Luke 2, verse 4. Okay? Check this out. I'm just dealing with the truth here. Because there's a lie going around saying that Joseph was not Christ's father, just a stepfather. And I'm proving you that Joseph is in the line of Christ. He's in the, the generation of Christ. And I'll show you the prophecy on Joseph. Now we're going to go here to Luke. We're going to go to Luke 2, verse 4. And it says, And Joseph also went up from Galilee out of the city of Nazareth and to Judea, and to the city of David, which is called Bethlehem. We just read about Bethlehem. Then it said, because he was of the house and lineage of David. Okay? So why are people teaching that lie? Why is people teaching that lie? Okay? Joseph was of the lineage of David. Okay? Now let's get Joseph in in the generation of Jesus Christ. Okay? Because a lot of these people, when they teach this lie, right, they start at 18 in Matthew, the first chapter. They always go to 18. They leave 1 to 17 out. You know why? Because they, they're not going to read this to you. This is 1 verse 16. And Jacob begot Joseph, the husband of Mary. There's Joseph in the generation of Jesus Christ. Okay? See that? So that's how you prove also that's a lie. So I'm going to go to Mark 6 verse 1 and 3 and show that Christ had sisters and brothers as well. This is Mark. Okay, let's get that. I'm going to go to Mark and get that right quick. We're going to go to Mark. Hold on one second. Let me get it. Because uh, there's a lot of lies going out. We're going, to, we're, going to, we're going to cover it. And I'm going to show you why these people are teaching these lies. Okay. This is Mark. Uh, hold on. This is Mark. Excuse me. My Bible's sticking. This is Mark 6. Hold on one second. Mark. I wish I had a reader. Hold on one second. Mark. Okay. Right here. Mark. We're going to get Mark, the sixth chapter. Mark, the sixth chapter. Bear with me because I'm trying to get these scriptures. I'm sitting down. This is Mark 6. Oh, Mark 6. Okay, we're here. Mark 6, 1 and 3. It says, And he went out from thence and came into his own country. This is talking about Christ. He came in his own country, and his disciples followed him. And when the Sabbath day was come, he began to teach in the synagogue, and many hearing him were astonished, saying, From whence have this man these things? And what wisdom is this which is given unto him, that even such mighty works are wrought by his hands? Now check it out. Is not this the carpenter, the son of Mary, the brother of James? He had brothers, James and Joses, and of Judah and Simeon. And are not his sisters, Christ had sisters? Okay. Here with us, and they were offended at him. Okay, so Christ had brothers and sisters as well, and he went back to his homeland, and they recognized him. And if you examine this part, nobody said nothing about that virgin birth. Well, I'm, I, I asked that question. I didn't hear Mary mention it. I didn't hear Joseph mention it. I didn't hear Christ himself mention anything about a virgin birth. All the disciples or anybody, Pontius Pilate, nobody mentioned it. So how you know? Okay, so now I want to go and get into. Uh, I want to go and get into the virgin issue, okay? Where they get that lie from? We're going to go to Isaiah, Isaiah 7, verse 14, and to show how they twist this scripture to try to make you believe about this virgin was going to bring forth a child. I'm going to show you how they twist that. We're going to go to Isaiah 7, verse 14, okay? It's Isaiah 7, verse 14, and it states, it says, Therefore, the Lord himself shall give you a sign. Now, Remember the word sign. I'm going to show you something. It says, Therefore the Lord himself shall give you a sign. Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son and shall call his name Ishmael. So my question to you is, is the sign the virgin or is the sign the, the child? Is the, I'm going to ask that question again. Is the sign the virgin or is the sign the child? Well, let's go to the scripture right here. We're going to go to Luke 2 verse 11. Okay? And bring up about that sign again. We're going to go to Luke. 2, verse 11, and it states, For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. And this shall be a sign unto you. What? The baby. The, the, the baby Jesus. Not the woman. Okay? The other thing I want to address about this virgin thing. Okay? We're going to go to Luke 1. Because I'm going to show you what they use to twist and lie. Okay? 
They use this right here. This is Luke 1, verse 34. Then said Mary unto the angel, How shall this be, seeing I know not a man? A lot of these people teaching this virgin birth heresy, they use this scripture to justify what they believe, okay? But if we go up to verse 31 and get clarity and understanding, you'll see something very heavy. This is uh, Luke, the 31st verse. It says, And behold, now always remember, before a major event happened in the nation of Israel, angels were sent to tell them what was going to happen before it happened. This is where a lot of people don't understand. So we're going to read right here what the angel said. I mean, what happened right here. And behold, let's, let's go up a little bit. It says, 28, And the angel came in unto her and said, Hail, thou that art highly favored, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women. Why was she blessed? Because the baby Jesus was coming through her womb. Okay, then it says, and when she saw him, she was troubled at the same. She had no idea what he was talking about at this point. Then it says, and cast in her mind what manner of salutation this should be. And the angel said unto her, fear not, Mary, for thou hast found favor with God. And behold, thou shalt. Now I want to examine this word shalt, S-H-A-L-T. Today, that's an old Quaker word they used to use. So today, what word we use? We say shall, S-H-A-L-L. So this proof right here with this little word that it wasn't at that time she was pregnant. That's why she said that. I know not a man. Because the angels tell them what's going to happen in the future. Every brother I dealt with on this, they ignore this word. You know why they ignore this word? Because they're indoctrinated with that Roman Catholicism and Christianity doctrine. And it's taught you and taught them what to see. Okay, Nana and great-grandpa and all them taught you that. So you... Bypass word, S-H-A-L-T, meaning it's going to happen. So she wasn't pregnant at this point, okay? So then I want to address this also. I want to address this part here about being espoused, okay? I'm going to go to, I'm going to, go to uh, uh, Luke 1, 27. Let's get that. Luke 1, verse 27. It says, to a virgin espoused. This is another word that people look over. <laughs> they always look over this word. Everybody I've battled with this, they just blind to that word, expouse. What that word expouse means, we're going to go to a scripture and see this word being used in its proper context. Expouse is the same thing as being betrothed, meaning what? That a woman can be married to a man and he have not never touched her. And there's a certain point in time where they're going to consummate the actual physical aspect of that marriage. Okay? That's what expouse The same thing as being betrothed. So we're going to go to... We're going to go to uh, 2 Corinthians 11 and look at this word and examine this word in its context. This is 2 Corinthians 11, and we're going to, we're going to examine it being used in its proper context so we can understand what espouse means. I'm going to go to uh, 2 Corinthians 11, verse 2. For I am jealous over you. Now, let me explain what's going on here, okay? The children of Israel was married to the Most High. Then the Most High turned his back on them. And Christ took them up, and now we're being married to Christ. Okay? So this scripture is going to use espoused in the context of what it really means. Because marriage represents the marriage between the Most High and Israel. Man and woman's marriage replicate the marriage between the Most High and Israel. But now we're being married to Christ. That's what the wedding in the scriptures is talking about. So it's going to use espoused in that context so we can understand what espoused means. It says, for I am jealous over you with a godly jealousy. For I have espoused, there goes that word again. I have espoused you to one husband that I may present you as a chaste virgin to Christ. So when you in an espoused marriage, you're promised, okay? You're promised to, to, the, to your husband. It's a set day that you meet. You go into the marriage chamber, tell you that in the book of Tobit, and you consummate the physical aspect of the marriage, Okay? So that's what that what was going on. And as we go further on and I explain more, we're going to go into the story why Joseph wanted to hide her because he violated that espoused custom, okay, where he lay with Mary and didn't wait to present her as a child's virgin at that certain point in time that was de designated for them to be among the family, okay? Then they go into the marriage chamber and they have the intercourse and that sealed the deal, okay? But they were married because he hadn't touched. That's what kind of that's what you don't understand our customs. It's the same thing as being betrothed. Okay, so we're going to go into that further when we get into more of this thing, so we can understand this. Okay, and we're going to get into everything. But I'm a, I'm gonna go ahead and give it to the brother. All 
White. Once again, you're now listening to the Bay Talk for You Season 3. Once again, the title of this debate for those people that just joined into the show, The Virgin Birth. Once again, the title of this debate, The Virgin Birth, the number is 646-716-7320. That's 646-716-7320. I see a lot of questions are already in the queue. <laughs> already. And I see uh, also people are sending me emails via uh, at Gmail right now, debatetalkview at gmail.com. Shout out to the U.K. I know it's like 12 o'clock right about now out there in the U.K. And they tuning into the show, and I really appreciate you guys for checking out the Bay Talk for you in the U.K. Um, all right, so we're going to go to Brother Josh right about now with his opening statement. Remember, it's uh, 15 minutes each. Let me just set the timer. Let me open up his phone line, and go ahead, brother. Thank you, Sal, and um, thanks, everybody, again, for tuning in. You know, I find it interesting that the topic of this debate is the virgin birth, and yet a war doesn't begin reading the actual story of the virgin birth, which is kind of suspicious in itself. Being that we're talking about the virgin birth, you would think a brother would start out in Matthew and in Luke that deals specifically with the details of what happened. But what they like to do, they like to jump all around, and then they like to try to confuse you and twist scripture to make it agree with their doctrine. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to start in Luke chapter 1, and we're going to read verses 30 to 35, and I'm going to let you see exactly what's going on. And we're going to do a little critical thinking and use a little common sense, something I think my opponent lacks when it comes to this topic. Not in general, just common sense when it comes to this topic. This is Luke chapter 1, verses 30 to 35. Look what it says. And the angel said unto her, Fear not, Mary, for thou hast found favor with God. And behold, thou shalt conceive in thy womb, and bring forth a son, and and shall call his name Jesus. He shall be great, and he shall be called the son of the highest, and the Lord shall give him the throne of his father David. I don't disagree that Jesus is from the lineage of David according to the flesh. No disagreement there. But look what it says in verse 33. And he shall reign over the house of Jacob forever. And of, the, and of his kingdom, there shall be no end. Now listen to this, verse 34. It's time for a little critical thinking combined with common sense. Then said Mary unto the angel, how shall this be, seeing I know not a man? Now, I agree with my opponent. She was not pregnant at this point. Otherwise, she would not have asked this question. She also had not, never had sex before in her life at this point, because that's what it means to know a man in this context, know him sexually. But let's use a little critical thinking and common sense. Number one, if, as a woman, if an angel came to you right now in this day and age, even if you were single and a virgin, and an angel told you you were going to have a child, then common sense would tell you that, oh, the angel must mean that one day I'm going to get pregnant by a man, or... I'm going to get married one day and get pregnant by a man. That's common sense. You're not going to ask, how shall this be, since I know not a man? You know what it takes to have kids. So the fact that Mary asked this angel, this angel how shall these things be, since I know not a man, indicates that the angel was implying this is going to happen instantly. Otherwise, you want to have to ask. That's why she said, wait a minute, how is this going to be? I've never even had sex before. This is called critical thinking, sisters and brothers. If an angel told me right now, Josh, you're going to have a son one day, right? I can be single. I can be never had sex a day in my life. But common sense will let me say, oh, he must mean when I meet a woman and get her pregnant. But if an angel came to me and said, Josh, uh, this, uh, you're going to get a, a woman going to get pregnant right now without you touching her, the first thing I'm going to say is, well, how can that be? Being I never had sex with her. This lets you know by the context of the story and what she asked that she knew this had to be some miraculous or supernatural. Either that or Mary is completely ignorant concerning sexual intercourse and how it produces babies. So you got to think when you read this stuff. My opponent is not doing that. The questions that these people ask and the actions they take show that this was no ordinary birth, right? But now we're going to keep reading. Look what it says. Look what the angel tells her, verse 35, which my opponent did not Emphasize on the angel's gonna directly answer her question. Let's see if he's gonna say, Oh, you're gonna lie with Joseph and he's gonna impregnate you. Look what he says, verse 35. Angel answered and said unto her, Remember, the question was, How am I gonna have a baby without having sex, without having 
and half day. Right? That was the question. Here's the answer. The Holy Ghost shall come upon thee, and the power of the highest shall overshadow thee. Therefore, because the Holy Ghost did this, also that holy thing which shall be born of thee shall be called the Son of God. Because Jesus' birth was a direct result of the Holy Spirit, and no human agency was involved whatsoever, that's why he was called the Son of God. This angel didn't say, oh, you're going to have sex with your future husband, Joseph, and you're going to give birth to the Messiah or to the Savior. It didn't say that. She asked, how shall I have this baby without having had sex? He gave her an answer. This is common sense, sister and brothers. How could somebody have been teaching for over 25 years and not see this? It's common sense because he's been indoctrinated. And when you're indoctrinated, you read things into the Scripture instead of taking the Scripture for what it says. But now let's go to Matthew chapter 1. So he said, let's go to Matthew chapter 1 to establish that um, Joseph was in the lineage of David. Nobody's arguing that. But let me show you what he conveniently left out. That's what these brothers do. A lot of these racist Hebrew Israelites that teach this are notorious for leaving things out. They always do this. Now let me show you what he left out, what he didn't bring to your attention. He said, Joseph was in the lineage of David. That's what he brought to your attention. But if you read Matthew chapter 1 all the way up to Matthew chapter 18, did you notice that the, uh, the pattern is whoever begot whoever? Whoever begot whoever. This man begot this son. This man begot this son. That son begot somebody. That son begot somebody else. But did you notice when he gets to Joseph, it never says Joseph begot Jesus Christ. Don't you think that's very significant, being that I already told you a million times that it is a pattern of how a son came into this world? Don't you think that's very significant? Read to me where it says, and Joseph begot Jesus Christ. So let's read the story. We're going to start at verse 18. Look what it says. Now the birth of Jesus Christ was on this wise. When as his mother Mary was exposed to Joseph, which means betrothed or engaged, which he brought out, look what it says. Before they came together. What does it mean before they came together? That means before they had sex. That's why Jesus said, what God have joined together, let not man put the southern. They had not become one flesh yet. It said before they came together, she was found with child of the Holy Ghost. That word all means from. It said she was pregnant from the Holy Ghost before they came together. So in the before they had sex, Mary was pregnant by the power of God, because that's what the Holy Ghost is. This is simple. He never said that Joseph begot Jesus. He cannot show you that. He's telling you that, but he cannot show you that. And I think that's very significant, being that Matthew chapter 1 opens up with a bunch of this guy begot that guy. But when he gets to Jesus, all of a sudden it stops. But let me show you this, verse 19. Then Joseph, her husband, being a just man and not willing to make her a public example. Wait a minute, sister and brothers. The brother just said earlier that Joseph put her away because they both violated the, um, the agreement of uh, being engaged before they consummated the marriage. First of all, there is no law in Torah law that says it is a sin to consummate a marriage with your uh, fiancé before the actual marriage takes place. There's no penalty. There's no right in Torah law, so we had no reason to put her away for that. Second of all, it said not willing to make her a public example. So whatever went wrong, Joseph was putting it all on Mary. He didn't say so they wouldn't be a public example. He said not really to make her a public example. What does this mean? What would you think today if you were engaged to a woman who was claimed to be a virgin and you know you never had sex with her and she popped up pregnant? What would you think? You would think she stepped out on But Joseph loved Mary. He didn't want to make her a public example because that woman would have been stoned if he would have went before the elders of Israel and said, I never touched a woman, and here she is pregnant. So he was going to do it privately. But look what he says. But while he thought on these things, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream, saying, Joseph, thou son of David, fear not to take unto thee Mary, thy wife, but that which is conceived in her, y'all know what conceived means, right? That means become pregnant. When you conceive a child, that means you make a woman pregnant. That which is conceived in her is all the Holy 
flee Joseph. Now, why would this angel appear to Joseph and tell him all this when Joseph knows he's the one that knocked her up? The Bible says Joseph was a just man. That means he was righteous. Would a righteous man uh, violate his wife before some kind of law that this brother's putting out that oh, this and then try to hide it? He ain't even thinking that if this was actually the case, how would Mary explain her protruding belly once she starts showing progress pregnancy? What happens four or five months down the road when Mary's belly pops out? What's up with new stuff? Hey, I ain't got nothing to do with that. That's all on her. I didn't touch her. This is what this man is trying to do. He is trying to smear the righteous characters of both Mary and Joseph to make a false doctrine stick. Joseph was a just man. A just man would not have done that. A just man would have all up to that and be like, you know, I slept with her. But why would he be afraid anyway? There's no law that says if you sleep with your fiancé before some supposed wedding ceremony, you will get stoned or penalized or nothing. That does not exist in Torah law. I challenge my opponent and anybody else who believes in nonsense he teaches tonight to call in and show me where it says you will be penalized if you sleep with your fiancé and get her pregnant before y'all have a wedding ceremony. Show me that in Torah law. I don't want to hear what your elder told you. Show me that in Torah law. It does not exist. So they got to make up rules to make their doctrine fit. They got to smear the characters of righteous people to make their doctrine fit. And they got to leave out important information to make their doctrine fit. And most importantly, they got to suspend common sense to make their doctrine fit. I don't have to do any of that. I'm just reading the book. That's all I'm doing. But look at this. It says, fear not to take uh, to be married to be thy wife. Why would he tell Joseph you need not to fear? Because you'll be afraid to get with a woman who you think messing around on you. Right? The angel that tells, don't be afraid. Because this child, she got it from the Holy Ghost. This ain't from some other man she's been messing around with. Verse 21. And she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus. For he shall save his people from their sins. And then verse 23 says, this is the fulfillment of the prophecy in Isaiah. But look at verse 24 and 25. This is the most significant, which, ironically, my opponent left out. They always leave off stuff. And he can't explain this. Yes, Jesus had earthly brothers and sisters. I don't deny that. I hate when people throw stuff out there like that, like I don't believe that or I'm dodging that. I acknowledge all of that. But look what it says right here, verses 24 and 25. Then Joseph, being raised from sleep, did as the angel of the Lord had bidden him, and took unto him his wife, verse 25, and knew her not till she had brought forth her firstborn son. In his face, and knew her not again, which would imply that he slept with her once before, and then did it again after Jesus was born. No, it said, and knew her not until she had brought forth her firstborn son and called his name Jesus. Joseph never touched Mary sexually until after Jesus was born. This is what the scriptures is saying. I don't know how these Hebrew Israelites claim the racist one, not all of them, because not all of them believe this. So don't call this that. We don't all believe this. I, I know who I'm talking to, and they know who I'm talking to. But I don't understand how these Hebrew Israelites claim to have knowledge of the scripture and will circumvent twist, play with, distort, add all kinds of customs and laws that do not exist to try to make a doctrine fit. It plainly says he did not know her, and you know what I mean, sexually, until she had brought forth Jesus Christ. It also said he was minded to put her away privately when she came up pregnant. What type of just man would knock a woman up and then try to put her away privately? To not make her a public example. Last time I checked, sisters and brothers, it takes two people to get a baby. Last time I checked, under normal circumstances. But he thought she cheated on him. He thought she stepped out on him. On him. But he loved her. And he didn't want her to get stoned. She would have got killed for this. Y'all understand that, right? And most importantly, when you read Matthew chapter 1, every father and son, is said to be born and he forgot whoever, except with the case of Jesus Christ. So it does not say that Joseph begot Jesus Christ, and the rest of the story shows clearly by these people's questions and act, or actions that something supernatural and out of ordinary was going on. Then Jesus Christ was most definitely born supernaturally through a 
virgin birth. That's all for now. All right, once again, you're listening to Debate Talk Free Radio. The title of this debate, The Virgin Birth. Once again, the title of this debate, The Virgin Birth, the number is 646-716-7320. That's 646-716-7320. I see a whole lot of questions in the switchboard right now. <laughs> well, once again, hold on, guys. Once we get to the public Q&A, that's your time to ask your questions and your comments. But for those people that are already pressing number one, don't press it again. I'm going to go down in order and take your questions when we get to the public Q&A part of this debate. So right about now, we're going to the rebuttal part of this debate. That's going to be 10 minutes each. Let's go back to Brother Awar. Let me just set up the timer, and you can go ahead, Brother. Yeah, Brother Awar, you can go ahead. Hold on for a second, guys. Brother Awar, can you hear me? Yes, sir. Yeah, I want to address uh, this guy's uh, first thing he brought out, Luke, because he always said people don't address his uh, thing. I'm going to go to Luke. 1 verse 35, it says, And the angel answered and said unto her, The Holy Ghost shall come upon thee. Okay, and there's a comma. I'm going to go to verse 46. When you read 46 on down, it tells you that the Spirit was on Mary. Not only Mary did the Holy Ghost go upon we're going to get Elizabeth too in verse 41. And it came to pass that when Elizabeth heard the salutation of Mary, the babe leaped in her womb, and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Ghost. Not only Elizabeth had the Holy Spirit on her, but John the Baptist as well. For he shall be great, this is verse 15, okay? For he shall be great in the sight of the Lord, and shall drink neither wine nor strong drink, and he shall be filled with the Holy Ghost. So when it said that Christ was going to have the Holy Ghost, I mean, it was on him since his birth, just like John the Baptist. Now I'm going to show in 1 verse 68, uh, Zacharias, okay? Zacharias as well had the Holy Spirit upon him, okay? We're going to read that. That's... um. One verse, I'm going to go up here to 1 verse 67. This is Luke 1 verse 67. And his father Zacharias was filled with the Holy Spirit. Okay? So I want to say this too. I'm going to read verse, he, he didn't read verse 36. Look at the comparison. It says, this is Luke 1 verse 36. And behold, thy cousin Elizabeth. This is the angel talking to Elizabeth. Because remember, John the Baptist had the same similar birth. Okay? And we're going to explain that. Check this out. And behold, Thy cousin Elizabeth, she hath also conceived. So are you saying that John the Baptist was born of an immaculate conception too? Okay. Okay, look at the comparison. John, he said that, that your cousin Elizabeth conceived also. What do the word also mean? The same way. I'm going to read that. Read it again. And behold, thy cousin Elizabeth, she hath also conceived a son in her old age. Okay. Now I want to read something that, that uh, Solomon said in the Apocrypha, a lot of cats don't believe in the Apocrypha, but the Apocrypha is a part of the Bible. It's a book of the Bible. Let's look. Let's see what Brother Solomon said. This is uh, Wisdom of Solomon 7, verse 1. I myself also am a mortal man, like to all. And the offspring, remember we used, Christ told you he was the offspring of David, okay, of him that was first made of the earth. And in my mother's womb was I fashioned to be flesh in the time of ten months being compact in blood of the sea of man, and the pleasure that came with sleep. And when I was born, I drew in the common air and fell upon the earth. So, so Solomon is giving you understanding what happens when a baby's in the womb. Then it says, which is of like nature. And the first voice which I uttered was crying, as all others do. I was nurtured in swaddling cloth. You read about Christ having swaddling cloth. Then it says, and that with cares. For there, this is the point I want, verse 5. For there is no king that had any other beginning of birth. For all men have one interest into life and the light going out. That's why Christ was born and he died. So my question is, if it, if it was a, a virgin birth or, like you said, the Holy Spirit came on Mary and he was born and Joseph had no uh, affiliation with that, why was Christ not born as an adult? Why did he have to be an infant? Somebody answer that for me. Okay, we just read this brother just looked past what I read about Joseph being of the line of David. Is that coincidence? Are you calling the Bible the book of law? And I want to we're gonna go to Matthew's address what he said about about Joseph. Let's get Matthew's right quick. That's what this guy everything I read went right over his head. Okay, so we're gonna read about that. And like I told you, just like I said, every time these guys try to prove this this doctrine, this virgin birth, they always jump. 
from from uh, uh, one to eighteen. They always started the eighteen verse. They they block out one to seventeen. They block all that out. Talking about the generation of Jesus Christ. I proved he came out of the lineage of David. Joseph came out of the lineage of David, and he ignored all that. If you watched him, that's how they indoctrinated him. I'm gonna show you why these guys are moving in the spirit of Satan teaching this lie. What's the whole motive behind Satan pushing these guys to teach this? We're gonna read. Um, we're gonna read it now. The birth of Jesus Christ was on this wise. When as his mother Mary was espoused to Joseph, I explained what espoused meant. You have to be presented as a chaste virgin when the time appointed for you to consummate, consummate the physical aspect of the marriage. Go read the history on our customs. Read about being betrothed. Read about the cloth that was put under the virgin so when you slept with her, the blood fell. Women have a thing called a hymen. When it's popped, the blood fell on the cloth. The family took the cloth, rolled it up, and, and uh, kept it. And there's another story in the Bible that would tell you that if somebody made an accusation against the virgin, they gave the cloth to the elders, and if it was blood on that cloth, that means she was a virgin. And if it wasn't, that means that she, uh, she, um, if it was, if it was blood on it, she was a virgin. If it wasn't, that means that somebody else had her before you did. So why didn't they bring that custom up with Joseph? If that's true, what he said, okay? Why did, why did, why did, why didn't Joseph go to the elders and say, look, I don't understand this, okay? You mean Joseph and the angels going to lie? They're going to perpetuate a lie and just keep a lie to themselves or something like that. And show me where the angel ordered him not to say nothing to nobody. Okay? These guys are for pushing and forcing this false doctrine. Now, I'm going to read it, read it again. Now, the birth of Jesus Christ was on this wise. When as his mother Mary was expoused, they go that word again, to Joseph, before they came together. So the coming together was the physical consummation of him dealing with it. That's why I told you, if you read the book of Tobit, the sixth chapter, they had a marriage. In our custom, we had a marriage chamber. If you have, you have two kind of marriages, a regular one, then you have an espoused marriage, which is the same as being betrothed, where you can have a wife, but you have a designated date that you're supposed to sleep with her, okay, and bring her to the people, the family, the people of the town. That's what the coming together is talking about. Then it says, and she was found with child of the Holy Ghost. Which was talking about Christ, and I explained the Holy Ghost was with John the Baptist was with Christ from their birth. Okay, now read on. Then Joseph, her husband, being a just man, he dealt with statutes, laws, and commandments, and kept the customs of Israel. Then it says, and not willing to make her a public example. So let's examine this. What is a public? How could he make her a public example? So that proved that it had to have been something physical that people could see that he wanted to hide her. What was the physical thing? She was pregnant. Why? Because the custom of being espoused is you must present your wife as a chaste virgin. So he got her pregnant before that date that he was supposed to bring the physical aspect of the marriage together. That's what he was worried about. Okay? That's why the angel came and assured him, don't be scared about that. Let's read. The Joseph, her husband, being a just man, not willing to make her a public example. That don't make sense what he said. That don't make sense what he said. What do you mean make a public example? Explain that. Was minded to put her away privately. Meaning what? Just keep her hidden so people don't see that she was pregnant before the actual date for them to come together. Meaning to consummate the physical aspect of that espoused marriage. That's all because he's a just man. He believed in them. So let's go on. But while he thought on these things, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared on him in a dream, saying, Joseph. Now, if you watch this guy when he was breaking this down, he add, all these guys that teach this false doctrine, they got to add their own words and put, put words in people's mouth. That's all they do. Then it says, but while he thought on these things, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared on him in a dream, saying, Joseph, thou son of David, fear not to take unto thee Mary thy wife. Mary was already his wife. Because it was an espoused marriage. Okay? Then it says, For that which is conceived in her, look up the word conceived, he even though it means to be pregnant. Okay? To be pregnant. Okay? Is of the Holy Spirit, meaning the Holy Spirit was with this child from birth. Just like John the Baptist. I proved it. Then it says, and she shall bring forth a son, and it gives a whole itinerary of what this child was going to be. But this guy don't want to listen. He don't want to listen to what, what needs to be said. Like I said, that Roman Catholicism and that Christianity doctrine have blinded many of us. And we're gonna, I'm going to show you later on what was the whole premise of, behind Satan putting this doctrine in the planet Earth. Okay, it's to sever us from the adoption. I'm going to explain what that's talking about. 
Okay, Satan don't want you to know you have kinship with Christ. It's a bloodline as well. Not just spirit, but a bloodline too. Okay, you have an inheritance. And the motive behind Satan teaching this false doctrine is to eliminate the direct bloodline of Christ. We kinfolk. That's why all the scriptures I've read, he didn't address. I showed you Christ himself said that he's the offspring of David. How can you go against that? Why? Because he's been indoctrinated with Roman Catholicism and Christianity which is all of an atheist doctrine, both of them. And he can't see. The man's blinded. You see it. The proof is in the pudding. And you see, when they break, everyone would break this down, they add and put words and he's, uh, words in, 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 in Joseph uh, in their theory. They always got to add something. All these guys teaching this false doctrine, they got to add their own words to it to make it fit. And they always jump to the 18th verse and leave the whole generation of Christ out. I done linked them up according to the seed. I showed the prophecies. He ignored all that. That's all I got to say. All right. Once again, you're now listening to Debate Talk for you Radio. The title of this debate, The Virgin Birth. Once again, the title of this debate, The Virgin Birth. The number is 646-716-7320. That's 646-716-7320. Later on, you can call in during the public Q&A with your questions and your comments. Just press number one. And, of course, I'll add you into the conversation. Uh, for those of you that want to uh, keep relevant with the latest shows, just go to www.facebook.com slash debate talk for you to see what's going on with the show updates. So right about now, we're still in the rebuttal part of this debate. Uh, each opponent has 10 minutes each. Let me just set the timer for Brother Josh. Hold on for a second. Open up his phone line, and you can go ahead, Josh. Thank you, Sal. And I just find it funny that the brother says that I ignored stuff when I specifically went to Matthew chapter 1 and Luke chapter 1. Then the brother had to nerd and say people adding stuff to Scripture, all this stuff about the marriage chamber and all that. None of that is mentioned in this story. Then he contradicted himself. He said Joseph was a judge man. He believed in the customs. But yet you claim that Joseph is trying to hide because he violates the customs. If you believe in the customs, you follow it. So what you have to do is you have to contradict yourself. Joseph put Mary away privately, not to make a public example out of her. And let me show you how idiotic this dude's argument is. One thing, let me explain something to y'all. This man has been teaching for over 25 years. So I'm pretty sure you don't see a woman get pregnant and get bigger and bigger as time goes on. He probably has kids himself. You know, Joseph's plan was to hide Mary to avoid being ridiculed how long do you plan on doing it? Everybody knew they were engaged in ancient Israel. When you got engaged, they put that on the record. So if he got engaged and Mary got pregnant, what was he going to tell everybody once her stomach started poking out? What was he going to do? See, this brother don't think. He doesn't use any common sense. And you have to suspend common sense. But let me show you what he did. This is Luke 1 and 36. He wasn't trying to make John the Baptist's birth be the same as Jesus' birth. That's laughable, right? This is Luke 1 and 36. Let me read this. He said, and behold, thy cousin Elizabeth, she has also conceived a son at her old age. It did not say that your son Elizabeth or her uh, son was born under the same circumstances or conditions as Mary. It just said she also conceived. That means she's also pregnant. That's all it means. He's reading that in cover text, right? Then he says, when it says that the Holy Spirit is going to come upon Mary, that didn't mean that Jesus going to have the um. Holy Ghost from the womb. That's also a lie, because it doesn't say that. This is Luke chapter 1 and verses 6 through 7. Let's see how John the Baptist was born, right? 6 through 7. And they were both righteous before God, it's about Zechariah and Elizabeth, John the Baptist's parents, walking in all the ordinance, I mean, all the commandments and ordinance of the Lord, blameless. And they had no child because their Elizabeth was barren. And they both were now well freaking in years. These are, this is an aged couple. And the woman can no longer conceive. Harshly the case with Mary, right? Now let's see what it says about John the Baptist. We're going to skip down to verse 14 and 15. And thou shalt have joy and gladness, and many shall rejoice at his birth. For he shall be great in the sight of the Lord, and shall drink neither wine nor strong drink. I don't recall that being said about Jesus. Because he's trying to make them be the same, Right? But look what else it says. And he shall be filled with the Holy Ghost even from his mother's womb. It don't say that about Jesus. It says the Holy Ghost is going to be upon Mary, and that 
that's how she's going to conceive Jesus. They're not the same as you having a child and the Holy Ghost being upon that child from the womb. Two totally different horses or two totally different colors. But that's what they do. They combine similar things to make them the same. Look what it says right here. And many of the children of Israel shall he turn to the Lord their God. This is not the same thing, sisters and brothers. This is that false doctrine he was taught. This is not Roman Catholicism. This is your New Testament, which these brothers don't really believe. What you have to understand is that the majority of them, I'm not necessarily saying it's him, but the majority of them come from and we only believe the Old Testament only background. And over the years, they gradually start accepting the New Testament in bits and pieces. Some of them have not made the leap to accept the birth of birth yet. Some of them have. This is why when they get to the New Testament, they're like, uh, we can believe this, we can believe that. But that birth of birth, nah, nah, nah. But the New Testament is clear. He's reading all this stuff into this. Finally, let's go to Wilson, because we read the apartment and we teach all of the two. Let's go to Wilson. Look what he said, right? This is Wilson 3. He said, Wilson 7 and 4. Look, he says, um, I was nursed. And swaddling clothes and with cares. For there is no king that had any other beginning of birth. That was completely true. In Solomon's time, who lived out uh, many, many, many centuries before Jesus Christ, to try to use something that happened and was said hundreds of years before Jesus' birth to try to determine what was going on with Jesus is stupid. Right? So let me show you something. If you believe that, then that means you, don't, that means you can go for this then. Let's go to Deuteronomy, chapter 32. Let me show you what it says about Moses. See, you guys don't use common sense. This is Deuteronomy 32, I'm oh, sorry, 34, and the last verse, verse 10. And there arose not a prophet set in Israel like unto Moses, whom the Lord knew face to face. If we just take this at the time it was written, that would mean we have to deny the Messiah, because the Messiah is that prophet that was like unto Moses. But at the time when this was written, that was true. There had never been a prophet like Moses who knew the Lord face to face and was doing signs and wonders to the extent that Moses was doing until Jesus was born. So you cannot go to wisdom and read something that Solomon said hundreds of years early, earlier about how somebody is born and try to apply it to Jesus Christ. Because if you do that, there are many places in the Bible where it ends with the statement that it has continued this way until this day. And if you go over to those areas right now, that is not going on. This is what you call a historical context fallacy that he's making. When Solomon wrote that, everybody who had ever been born came in under normal circumstances. You can't apply that to Jesus. That is stupid. Just like I can't apply Deuteronomy 34 and verse 11 to Jesus because that was written during the time of Moses. What these people like to do, sisters and brothers, is add stuff to the scripture. If you notice, when he went to Matthew chapter 1, he did not read to you where it says, go to be Jesus Christ. Why is that not read? Why is that not written there when every single other person that came through that lineage is said to have been begotten by their prospective father? Why doesn't he say that about Jesus? He said, Jesus is the seed of David according to the flesh. I don't disagree with that. But seed also means descendant or offspring. And that would include any woman of Israel, too. There were women that were descendants of David. Y'all know that, right? There were women that were the offspring. Uh-oh, did I lose time? Still there? Y'all still hear me? Yeah, you're still there. I can hear you, brother. Okay. Okay, because my phone did this little thing that makes me think that it was gone. Right. There are women that are the offspring of David. So if Joseph was not his father and Mary was from the seed of David, and Jesus came through Mary, he would still be considered a descendant of David according to the flesh because he had a fleshy mother who was a descendant of David. For some reason, these Hebrew Israelites tend to think that David having sex and giving a descendant mandates that Joseph had to have sex with Mary for Jesus to be his descendant. Not true, sisters and brothers. And I also want to point out the fact that he went to Revelation where Jesus said he is the root and the offspring of David. That would mean that he believed that Jesus is God, which I know he don't believe, because your root means you come from that, and your offspring means it comes from you. So if, you got, if, it's, so if you're trying to go to Revelation to establish any other doctrine, then he also shoots himself in the foot, because I know 
who I ain't going to say I know, but I'll assume it, and correct me if I'm wrong, he don't teach that Jesus is God. But if you do believe revelation and you're trying to use that, if Jesus said, I am David's root, root is the opposite of offspring. They're like, they're basically like Jesus saying, I am David's father and his son. How can both be simultaneously true? So something, brothers, don't fall for this scripture twist and all this stuff that this brother's trying to drop up here. The only thing he's doing is repeating some fake, racist, Hebrew Israelite doctrine that he was all uh, taught, and he's trying to dump it off on y'all and ignore the obvious. Jesus Christ was born of a virgin. He was not immaculately conceived. That's something entirely different. That's another whole Roman Catholic concept. Anyway, won't you look it up? Read a book, bro, and learn the difference between the virgin birth and the immaculate conception. And then tell the audience the difference between the two, if you have the nerve to do so. That's all for now. All right, the number is 646-716-7320. That's 646-716-7320. You're live listening to Debate Talk for you. The title of this debate, for those people that just joined into the show, The Virgin Birth. Once again, the title of this debate, The Virgin Birth. Right about now is the cross-examination part of this debate. Now, each opponent has prepared questions, several questions to ask one another. Of course, I'm going to ask my uh, uh, special guest to please speak one person at a time so the listening audience and myself can gain understanding. Be mindful that we have thousands of listeners tuning in to this particular segment of the show. So we're going to start off with Brother Awar asking questions to Brother Josh, and that's going to be 10 minutes each. Let me open up their phone lines, and you can go ahead, Brother, ask your questions. Okay, uh, Brother Josh. Uh, uh-huh. Can you show me anybody, I asked this question before, anybody in the New Testament, any angel, um, anybody with Mary, Joseph, that mentioned Christ being born of the virgin birth status that you're talking about? Did Christ no, mention? I can. No, I cannot, other than the actual story itself, because of the same reason that Jesus was going around telling his own disciples not to even tell people he was the Messiah. Jesus did not want anybody to know that anything about him was special. He didn't even want people to know he was the foretold Messiah until after he died and resurrected from the dead. So nobody was going around saying, hey, my son is born of a virgin. Nobody was doing that because that's not what, what God wanted him to do. Okay. So, uh, so let me ask you a question. So when I read Luke, the second chapter, where it showed that Joseph was a direct direct lineage of the seed of David. That means nothing to you. Well, actually, you read that in Matthew. That means everything to no, me. No, I read the one I in Luke. Luke. Oh, I remember you reading the one in Luke. Um, the uh-huh. one in uh, Matthew as well. I remember you going to Matthew. They're both it's in Luke and in Matthew. That means okay. everything to me. I emphatically believe that Joseph was of the seed of David. But he was not the biological father of Jesus Christ. That's why Matthew chapter 1, even though you run down that whole lineage, and that's a pattern. When the pattern is broken, that means something out of the ordinary has occurred. That's why you can't read anywhere where it says, and Joseph begot Jesus Christ, or the one that will be called Christ. That's why you can't read that. Okay, so let me ask you this. What's your take on this? This is Hebrews 2.14. For as much then as the children are partakers of flesh and blood, he also himself likewise took part of the same, that through death he might destroy him that had the power of death, death, that is the devil, and deliver them who through fear of death were all their lifetime subject to bondage. For verily he took not on him the nature of angels, but he took on him the seed of Abraham. Now give me clarity understanding on that, because this is going to knock out your theory. Well, that's what you think it's going to do. It's saying exactly what it means. only thing this is saying, you can explain this with John chapter 1 and verse 1. It says, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. So we got the Word being with God, but also being God, right? Then you go down to verse 13, and the Word was made flesh. So Jesus preexisted as the godly Word, or the Word that is God, and he was made flesh. He came in the likeness of man and took upon himself the seed of Abraham through the lineage of Mary. But he was not Joseph's biological father, which I'm going to show you in my cross-examination. I'm going to show you that. Now, you're telling me, now, all throughout the Bible, all throughout the history of the Bible, we all know and understand that it, dep- it, it was men's origin and their genealogy was based on the seed of men. When you read Matthew, you're telling me now, all of a sudden, when it comes down to Christ, 
Because it tell you he's of the tribe of Judah. You saying it go? Uh, there's no way in the Bible you can prove that women had seed. That women had seed? Well, yeah, you, you, you saying it's based off of marriage, right? Is, you can read that in Genesis chapter three. Well, it said I will make enmity between you talking about. Are you woman. serious? You can we go there? And that, right? I but said, can we go the there? Yeah, we can go there. That's in Genesis. Okay, you but said Genesis three. Continue. What? Yo, yeah, um, I have to pull it up for you. This is the one and only time in the Bible where a woman, you know, described as having like her feet. That's Genesis chapter three. Okay. Where you at? This is verse 15. It says, mm-hmm. and I will put enmity between thee and the woman, and between mm-hmm. thy seed and her seed. Of course, okay. the seed had to be planted into her to okay. become her seed. I'm not denying that. But you have to understand that Jesus is the second Adam. He's the second Adam. Adam had a unusual creation or birth, so to speak. So okay. did Jesus. Adam was born of a virgin. He was made from the dust of the ground. That ground okay. had never been filled while planted by a man. He was born from virgin birth. He was born from virgin earth. Jesus okay. was also born of a virgin. That's why you don't understand the whole concept uh, between the first and the second Adam. Okay. But can, I can, can I with that? When you read that scripture, okay, now I want to ask you a question about this. Cain and Abel, who was their father mm-hmm. and mother? Who was Cain and Abel's father and mother? Uh, that would be Adam and Eve. Okay, then. Now, in this point in time in this scripture, was the serpent, was what was being told to the serpent and Eve, okay? Was that a direct conversation with them? Why was, because right here, when, what, according to my understanding, when I read it, the reason why Adam was excluded, because the conversation was between the serpent and Eve. Because we know that we know that Adam and Eve was Cain and Abel's father. So right here in this illustration, it's talking at this point. The conversation is to uh, Adam. I mean, um, the serpent and Eve. That's why he said thy seed, which is her, her and Adam's seed. That's common sense. If you can't see that, everybody try to use that to prove a woman have seed. No, that's the conversation between uh, being illustrated between about the serpent and Eve. That's why Adam was excluded. It took Adam and Eve to make Cain and Abel. So you can't but exclude Adam prophecy. out of it. But that was a prophecy uh, that was um, fulfilled in Jesus Christ. Do you um, believe that? What do you mean? About the, about the serpent seed, right? Being, you know, that he was going to do that. Do you know that? I, hold on, hold on. Did you know that? On. That, was, that was a prophecy concerning Jesus Every, Christ. Everybody, Israel's included into these prophecies as well. Not just no, Christ, but that. Israel too, huh? I said there was a prophecy when he said he shall bruise the surface feet under your feet. Did you know that? That's in Romans 15 and 20. Let me read that to you. This is a prophecy. That, that's your and, and the, No, this is the fulfillment of it. Look what it says, Romans 16 and 20. And the God of peace shall bruise Satan under your feet shortly. These are believers in the Messiah, right? Okay. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. This is the woman's seed. The, the woman's seed are, are believer in Jesus Christ. He shall bruise Satan, turn off the serpent, referring to the serpent, under your feet shortly. So that's a prophecy referring to what Jesus Christ and the followers of Jesus Christ were going to do. So that's a prophecy anyway. Well, you can use it for that, or you can use the bruising that happened with Jacob and Esau as well. Oh, uh, I don't It said he really, bruised his heel. I, I haven't. They didn't say he bruised his heel. It said Jacob grabbed hold of Esau's heel. It said grab hold of. It right, and it said it bruised. You can read it. Okay, it you can use it for that too. Huh? Is that Jacob bruised Esau's heel? Yeah. Or you should hold on Esau's heel. I like huh? to see that. Well, anyway, not bruised. Let, like let me see. Well, touch, not bruised. You're right. But I'm saying my understanding, I use that for that, okay, because when you read about bruising the head, that was talking about Christ as well with the with the thorns. But I don't. I want to do another class on that. But back to what you were saying. Like I said, Adam, huh? So I'm saying like Romans 16 and 20 is the fulfillment of that. Okay. You know, now, what I'm saying here about people using that to saying that the woman had seed, it was talking about Adam's and Eve's seed, which was, it tell you about Cain, when you go into Job 30, explain the whole thing. So you can't use well, that. That's my point. Well, as I can use that because that's a reference to the Messiah. I, how can I not use that when that's a reference to the Messiah and his birth and what he was going to accomplish through his birth? How can I not use that when it said, and the God of peace shall bruise Satan under your feet shortly, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. This is right. Paul talking to believers in the Messiah. So who made it possible for these believers to bruise Satan under their who made it possible for these believers to bruise Satan under their feet? Who made that possible? That haven't happened yet. I know that haven't happened. I agree. 
I agree that it happened after the uh, prophecy of Jesus, but who made that possible? Of course we who know that, that Christ made that possible, but the, you, you, you're leaving the point. Oh, okay. Yeah, see, the question is... Okay, so... <laughs> Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, I'm saying. Uh, I'm saying. Uh, that was a rhetorical question. In other words, I'm sorry. What I'm saying is, this is a fulfillment of that. That's what I'm trying to get you to understand. That's a prophecy going toward that how the Messiah was going to ultimately defeat Satan, the evil one. That's a prophecy, and it used the woman as a foreshadow of a woman actually putting forth the seed. The same thing as you read for read about in Revelation chapter twelve. You follow what I'm saying? That's all that's talking about right there, bro. When you read the scripture, it's plain that Joseph did not father Jesus. That's plain. That's why they say he begat Jesus. Hello? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, like I said, there's no, I mean, <laughs> you see how this guy, you know, you should have been a politician, man, because you know how to wiggle, you, you miss your calling, Okay. It's obvious. I mean, what are you saying? That this Joseph just walking around with Mary and just pretending to be? I mean, that don't make sense. And it's just ironic he happened to be of the lineage of David. Okay, then you find no. him in the generation of Christ. Come on, that's, no, that that's don't not ironic. That, that's not ironic. That was necessary for Jesus to have legal rights to the throne. But him being born of Mary was necessary for him to actually fulfill the prophecy of being born of the seed of David according to the flesh. So but, both was but, necessary. It's not a coincidence. That was carefully planned by the Most High. Okay, let me ask you a question right quick. This is uh, Deuteronomy 18, verse 18. Okay, do you... Okay, time is up. Once again, you're listening to Debate Talk for You Radio. The title of this debate, The Virgin Birth. Hopefully you guys are taking down your notes. You got your pen and pads ready. You got your Bible ready. And do your own studying, you know. I uh, always recommend that anything that you hear on debate talk for you, make sure you write down some information and do your own studying and get your, you know, get that knowledge and wisdom and understanding. All right, so we're still in the cross examination part of this debate. We got to go to Brother Josh right now. He's going to ask questions to Brother Awar. Well, let me just set the timer once again, and you can go ahead with your questions, Brother. Go ahead. All right, thank you, Sal. Uh, my question to you is this. Could you turn to Luke chapter 3 and verse 23 and read that, please? Luke 3, 23? Uh-huh. Okay. Hold on one second. All Luke right. 3, 23. I mm-hmm. knew you were going to go there. Luke 3, 23, okay? Mm-hmm. And Jesus himself began to be about 30 years of age being, as was supposed, the son of Joseph, which was the son of Heli. Okay? Now, my question to you is, what does it mean when it says Jesus, being 30 years of age, being, as was supposed, the son of Joseph? What does that mean? Oh, boy. Now, you know, you, I can show you many scriptures where when people put this together, they put what they want to put in it. You can't get past what I read, okay? They can put suppose or whatever, and that's set up to deceive people. Now, you know that's that. That's in the original text. That's in the huh? original text. That's in the original Hebrew text. I mean, Greek text. That's in the original Greek text. Nobody added that. That's in the original Greek text. So you're so saying... Nobody threw that in there. But you just agreed yourself that Christ was of the lawns of David, right? I agree with that. But what I'm saying is, what does it mean when Luke wrote, as was supposed, the son of Joseph? Why did he write, as was supposed? What does that mean? Well, that's their understanding, but that's what he put it in, I guess, to put it in there. But that don't uh, change course. anything. He, he put, well, do you know what as what supposed means? Do you know what that means? So you're saying, so let saying, me ask you a question. Well, go ahead. No, you can't ask me a question. It's my turn. Okay, go ahead. When it says, when it says as was supposed, let me show you that in the Greek. That is the word nom ipso. That's 35, 43 in the Greek section. And it hmm. means properly to do by law, use it. That is a custom. So listen to this. Passively, passively by usual extension to deem, regard, suppose, think. Be what? So when it says suppose, like I say, if I saw you walking around with an old couple, right? 
and one was your mother, and I found another man walking around with her, and um, you were calling the calling the dad and everything. What would I suppose concerning that man when it comes to you? What would I think that man is to you if I heard you call him dad? Yeah, I mean what you said. They guess that just they suppose it's supposed to be what you're saying. But well, exactly. So my question mm-hmm. is, if Joseph was most definitely the biological father of Jesus, why would Luke even put that in there to begin with? Why would he say it was believed or assumed that Joseph was his father? Nobody else in the Bible gets that appellation when they show the relationship between father and son. Nobody else. You can't read why mm-hmm. Isaac was the supposed son of Abraham or Jacob was the supposed son of Isaac. But when it comes to the Messiah, it says, as was supposed. Everybody believed and assumed that he was Joseph's father. But Luke had already let you know in the previous chapter that wasn't the case. That's why he put that in there. But let me show you something. Could you turn to Mark? I'm sorry, Matthew chapter 13. I got another question for you. Mm -hmm. This is Matthew chapter 13. This is not pagan. This is New Testament. Either you believe in New Testament or you don't. Now, if you don't believe in New Testament... I ain't got no beef with you on that. That's your business. But don't try to make the New Testament agree with your way of thinking. You follow what I'm saying? Just say, I don't believe that. Just say it. This is Matthew chapter 13, verses 53 to 55. Could you read that, please? Matthew 13 what? Verses 53 to 55. Matthew 13, verses 53, you said? Mm-hmm. To 55, please, sir. Okay. It says, And it came to pass that when Jesus had finished these parables, he departed thence. And when he was come into his own country, he taught them in their synagogue in so much that they were astonished and said, Whence hath this man this wisdom and these mighty works? Is not the carpenter's son? Is not his mother called Mary and his brethren James and Josh and Simon and Judas? And his now, sisters are... This, okay, that's good, that's good. Now, mm-hmm. according to this, according to this, who did they call Jesus the son of? Who did they call him the son of? They said the carpenter's son. Who's they referring to? Joseph. But in Luke chapter 3, Luke lets you know everybody simply thought that. Why would he say everybody thought that if that most definitely was the case? It never says that about Mary. Why isn't Mary's parentage ever doubted or assumed or thought upon? Can you answer that question? Say it again. Why, it, why doesn't it say as was assumed the son of Mary or as was assumed to be the brother of of James, Joseph, Simon, and Judas. Why doesn't it say assumed with any other relationship in his family except his father? Why doesn't well, it say that? My stand on that is the white man put that in there. I'm going to leave it like that. Okay, my <laughs> question to you would be, can you prove that the white man put that in there? That's my now, you question. Said that was the right, question. You said that was in the Greek, right? Yeah, that's in the original Greek. You can check okay, out the Okay, I'll, get, I'll tell you what. I'll get back to you. I'll go through the Hebrew and make sure. I'll get back to you. Well, you can't go to the Hebrew. you got to go to the Greek because the New Testament was translated into Greek. There is a theory that Matthew was originally written in um, Hebrew, but as for the rest of the New Testament, it's believed that it was originally written in Greek and translated into Aramaic. All right. So well, we know, that, mm-hmm. we know that those that translated this book out of the original tongue and put it in Greek, they played with a lot of scriptures. We all know that. The yeah, scriptures I can show you away. where they played for it and took parts out. To not give the full understanding, like Joe, uh, Joel 2.32, uh, and to go with uh, 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 Romans 10, verse 13, they put fragments of that scripture to take out the true understanding, which is in Joe, Joel 2.32. So we know that they played with this Bible at some point. Okay, and try Well, if they played with this Bible at some point, then you need to put this Bible down and get the real one. No, I proved the facts. Hold on, hold on. But I, just, I proved the fact that Joseph, the Bible says he's of the lineage of David. I showed him in the, the generation of Christ. There's nothing to argue about that. I, agree. Yeah. I, I don't. I, I, I'm not arguing that. But what you did not show me is where it said that Joseph begot Jesus Christ. Can you show me where it says that Joseph begot Jesus Christ anywhere in the New Testament? Can you show me that? You want to see those exact words? Those exact words, yes. Because that's in Matthew chapter 1, and that's the pattern that's mentioned. I don't know how many times. You can count it yourself. But I will say, just throwing out a number, 20 or 30 times where it says that whoever begot whoever. Maybe that's a big number, but I know definitely over 10. But when you get to Jesus, it doesn't say that. So can you show me in Matthew chapter 1? Let's turn to Matthew chapter 1. Let's turn there. And we'll read it. I'll read it. We're going to say this. I'm not going to read everything, obviously, but I'll read enough. 
Okay. Matthew chapter 1, verse 1. The book of the generation of Jesus Christ, the son of David, the son of Abraham. Right? So it's all Jesus' was son of David. Not denying it. Abraham begot Isaac, and Isaac begot Jacob, and Jacob begot Judas and his brother. And Judas begot Sarah, and Zara, blah, blah, blah. And Abraham begot whoever, and Solomon begot whoever, and Jesse begot David, and David begot Solomon, and Solomon begot Rehoboam, and Asa begot Jehoshaphat, and Obama begot Joseph. And now when you get to verse 18, this is why people start at verse 18, because it's where the pattern stops. Even when we go to verse 16, this is the last thing it says. And Jacob begot Joseph, the husband of Mary, of whom was born Jesus, who is called Christ. Jesus was born of Mary and the Holy Ghost. That's what that says. So Joseph did not begat Jesus Christ. You can't read that anywhere in Matthew chapter 1. Can I ask you a question? Oh, it's my question time. Okay. So let me ask, so let me ask you a question. Why mm-hmm. are you telling people that Joseph begat Jesus Christ? When the scriptures doesn't say that. That's my question. <laughs> okay. Well, like I said, okay, if you read, it's common sense. That's why a lot of people get deceived by this book, okay, because they don't know how to deal with common sense. Here you have the whole generation of Christ, like right here in Hebrews 2, verse 16. It says, For verily he took not on him the nature of angels, but he took on him the seed of Abraham. You find Abraham, the book of the generation of Jesus Christ, in Matthew 1, verse 1, the book of the generation mm-hmm. of Jesus Christ, the son of David, the son of Abraham. So my question is, how did Christ get linked all the way to the seed of Abraham? Okay? It well, you, you can't see, ask, see, you can't oh, ask oh, a question oh, <laughs> because it's my time. But I no, think because you, you, you're, trying to play, you're trying to play mine. You, you're dealing with... Trying to play word games and mind tricks. I'm not I, playing I word strategy. games. I'm not trying on, to let, trick, let I'm me not make trying my point. Anybody. Let, let me make my point. Stop it, with the accusations. I, hold on. The, geni- the generation support everything. So what you're saying is where you went, everybody needs to just push the generation of Christ out of their mind. Okay? Where I mentioned no, show. I'm not saying Joseph. that. I'm not saying that. I'm not what, saying what that. Are you, what Joseph, are we to do with it then? So you're saying Joseph, that's a lie? I'm just showing, I'm just showing you. That Joseph was not the father of Jesus Christ. That's why Luke chapter okay, three said, "As Joseph opposed the son of you." Your answer to that was well, the white man that. put that in there. Never you said the white man put that in there. So anything you don't agree with, you just gonna say somebody put that in there. Hold up. So, you said so, anything you show me, somebody put so that it, in there. So for the rest on. of this debate. Anything you show me that I don't agree with, I'm going to say somebody put that in there. So I want we you should, all to respond to that. So what you're telling me is Matthew's one verse sixteen. We need to ignore. And Jacob no, got Joseph, never, the husband of Mary. First so, of all, you ask me a question. Been, hello? I, I, you can't ask me a question. You can't ask me a question. Okay, I, what I'm saying, what I'm saying. All right, once again, you're listening to Debate Talk for You Radio. The title of this debate, The Virgin Birth. The Virgin Birth. My special guest is Brother Awar and Brother Josh. The number is 646-716-7320 at 646-716-7320. And Brother Awar, uh, actually during the public Q&A, if you have any more further questions, that will be your time that you can ask Brother Josh any more questions during the public Q&A. So you can utilize that time during the public Q&A to ask some further questions to Brother Josh. All right, right about now, we're going into the intermission part of this debate. It's going to be five-minute intermission, you know, give the brothers some time to gather up some more notes or, you know, get a beverage to drink. And we'll be right back, stand by after these messages. And all of you people that press the number one, don't go anywhere. I'm going to get to you during the public Q&A. And um, we'll be right back after these messages, stand by. All right, so let's get back into this debate. We're going to the second rebuttal part of this debate, the second rebuttal. That's going to be seven minutes each. And right after the second rebuttal is my favorite part of the show, the public Q&A, where you listen to an audience. We're calling with your questions and your comments by dialing the number, 646-716-7320. That's 646-716-7320. Once you call in, you press the number one, and that'll put you on the switchboard. That'll let me know you have a question or a comment. Of course, due to the high volume of callers, I'm going to give you guys a limited time to ask your question and your comments and use your time wisely. Once again, this is the second rebuttal part of this debate. That's seven minutes each. Let's go to Brother Awar. Let's start this off. Let me set up the timer, and you can go ahead, Brother. Yes, sir. Yeah, uh, there's a motive. There's a purpose for the birth of Christ uh, being born like you and I, okay? And this is, this, is, this is the purpose of that. This is Romans 8, verse 3. For what the law could not do, in that it was weak through the flesh, 
God sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh. And for sin, condemned sin in the flesh. So the Messiah had his cup he had to drink. And what was it? To condemn sin in the flesh. Okay? That's why he had to be born like you and I. Now I'm going to go to Hebrews verse 2, verse 17. From 16 and 17, again, it says, And for verily he took not on him the nature of angels, but he took on him the seed of Abraham. Wherefore in it, it all things it behooved him to be made like unto his brethren. What do that mean, being made like his brethren? Being born in that corrupt flesh like you and I. Then it says, That he might be a merciful and faithful high priest in things pertaining to God. Why? Because Christ took on all the titles. The title of high priest the title of prophet, all the great titles the Most High gave to us that we screwed up, the children of Israel. Well, he had to understand his office, okay? He had to understand what it was to suffer and be tempted in the flesh. That's the whole motive behind the Most High having them being born like you and I, through man and woman. I'm going to read it again. Wherefore, in all things it behooved him to be made like unto his brethren, that he might be a merciful and faithful high priest in things pertaining to God to make reconciliation for the sins of the people. For in that he himself had, ha, he himself have suffered being tempted, he is able to secure them that are tempted. So he had to be like you and I, to under, he had to be made like you and I to understand what it is to be tempted. So he can have mercy when he's in his office of being the high priest and all that. It's a purpose and a method to him being born like you and I. A lot of these guys teaching us do not understand. And they use the same routine to support their argument. Now, another purpose, I want to go to uh, Romans, the ninth chapter, okay? The whole motive behind Satan and his constituents pushing this doctrine is to sever us from the adoption. What's the adoption? Let me read it. It's Romans 9, verse 1. I say the truth in Christ. This is Paul speaking. I say the truth in Christ. I lie not. My conscience also bearing me witness in the Holy Spirit that I have great heaviness and continual sorrow in my heart, for I could wish that myself were a curse from Christ for my brethren. Look what he said. My kinsmen, according to the flesh, okay, who are Israelites. You can't get past that. To whom pertaineth the adoption. We're going to read about this adoption that Satan and his constituents are trying to sever from the children of Israel, okay? The adoption and the glory and the covenant and the giving of the law and the service of God and the promises, who are the fathers and to whom, as concerning the flesh, Christ came. Okay, when you go to Deuteronomy 18, 18, like I said before, you cannot even teach this word unless you of the 12 tribes of Israel. Hebrews 7, 14 tells us that Christ was, is evident that he sprang out of the tribe of Judah. That had to be linked according to sperm, the seed. You can't get past that, okay? But they're going to fight it down because Satan and his constituents are trying to sever the adoption. Let's get the adoption right quick. I'm going to go to Galatians. Okay, this is the whole motive behind Satan and his constituents trying to sever Israel from their inheritance and their kinship to the throne. This is Galatians. Get it right quick. This is Galatians. Uh, Galatians. I'm going to Galatians 4. Galatians 4, verses 5 and 6, right quick. Galatians 4, 5 and 6, it says, To redeem them that were under the law, that we might receive the adoptions of sons. That's what the whole redeemed process of the Messiah was about, for us to be, to deal, be meshed back to the Father. Then it says, And because ye are sons, God hath sent forth the Spirit of his Son unto your hearts, crying, Abba, Father. Now I'm going to go to Ephesians. 1 verse 7 right quick. So the whole motive behind Satan pushing this doctrine through these brothers is to sever us from the adoption, becoming again sons of the Most High. This is uh, Ephesians 1 verse 7 right quick. Ephesians 1 verse 7. Okay. 1 verse 7. To whom we have redemption through the blood, his blood, and the forgiveness of sins according to the riches of his grace, wherein he hath abounded toward us in all wisdom and prudence, having made known unto us the mystery of his will, according to his good pleasure which he hath proposed in himself, that in dispensation of the fullness of times he might gather together one all things in Christ, both which are in heaven and which are on earth, even in him, and whom also we have obtained an inheritance, 
being preordestined according to the purpose of him who worketh all things after the counsel of his own will. This has been all predestined before the beginning of time, okay? Us being kin, kinfolk to Christ. In Romans, the first, Romans the ninth chapter, Paul explained who his kin people are, the Israelites, and according to the flesh whom Christ died. You can't get past that, okay? So you can argue it down all you want. The truth is going to speak. That's all i got to say on that. All right. Once again, you're listening to Debate Talk Free Radio. The title of this debate, The Virgin Birth. The number is 646-716-7320. That's 646-716-7320. Right now, there's still a second rebuttal part of this debate. But right after this, this is the public Q&A, where you, the listening audience, will call in with your questions and your comments. I already see a couple questions on the switchboard. But once again, if you have any questions, when you call in, just press the number one, and I'll add you in the conversation if you like. You can press the number one right now to guarantee your spot on the switchboard. You can press the number one, call in. The number is 646-716-7320. Everybody knows it's my favorite part of the show. I love listening to the people. It's open season, so you can call in with your questions and your comments. So let's go to Brother Josh right now. And uh, he had seven minutes for his second rebuttal. Then we open up his phone line and go ahead. Thank you, Sal. And if y'all notice, the brother's getting off into all of these other things, saying that if you believe in a virgin birth, that means you believe that Satan is trying to sever you from people. All of that stuff is conjecture. He can't prove that because I don't teach any of that, and I believe in a virgin birth. So to try to say that that's the purpose is just his way of trying to wiggle off the fact that he clearly lost this debate. When you put somebody so far into a corner where they claim that somebody put stuff in the Bible and can't even prove it, oh, to me, that's a white flag. You waving the white, white flag right there. In other words, you're saying, I see it, I can't get around it, so I'm going to say it's not supposed to be there. Right? But anyway, in order to understand the virgin birth, you got to be spiritual. And let me show you how Paul broke it down. We're going to go to 1 Corinthians 15 and verse 45. Let me show you something about Jesus and Adam having both a virgin birth and why Jesus was called the second or the last Adam. This is 1 Corinthians 15 and 45. Look what it says. And so it is written, the first man, Adam, was made a living soul. The first man, Adam. It says, the last Adam was made a quickening spirit. This last Adam is referring to Jesus Christ, the Messiah. That's what that's referred to. Now we're going to get down to verse 47. Look what it says. The first man is of the earth, earthy. He's from the earth. The second man is the Lord from heaven. So Paul is getting spiritual here. But I'm going to show you that Jesus was the second Adam in more ways than one. First, let me show you that Adam was born of a virgin mother, symbolically speaking. This is Genesis 2, verses 4 through 7. Look what it says. These are the generations of the heavens and of the earth when they were created. In the day that the Lord God made the earth and the heavens, and every plant of the field before it was in the earth, and every herb of the field before it grew. For the Lord God had not caused it to rain upon the earth, and there was not a man to till the ground. So no man had even been created yet. And there was no man to till the ground, no meaning no seed or irrigation had been done whatsoever. So this was virgin earth. And I'm going to show you all that. It says, um, but there went up a mist from the earth and watched the whole face of the earth, of the ground. Let's see where Adam came from. And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground, which means from the earth, and breathed into his mouth with the breath of life, and man became a living soul. So Adam came from the earth. Let me show you what the Bible calls the earth, how it symbolically refers to the earth. This is Genesis 4 and verse 11. Look what it says when God was talking to Cain. And now art thou cursed from the earth, which hath opened her mouth to receive thy brother's blood from thy hand. Notice, symbolically speaking, the earth was a moment. And if Adam was created from the earth, in a spiritual sense, it's like the earth was his mother. But it said, no man had ever killed the ground. So this birth was virgin earth. Adam had a mother, symbolically speaking, the earth. So this is what we call it, mother earth. But let me show you that the ancient Hebrews understood this to be virgin earth. We're going to Josephus. This is Antiquities 1.1.2 and paragraph 34. Again, Antiquity 1.1.2 and paragraph 34. Look what it says. This man was called Adam, which in the Hebrew dog signifies one that is red, because he was formed out of red earth compounded together. For of that kind is virgin and true earth. But you don't even understand that by you 
denying the birth of birth, you're standing in the fire and not taking out. You don't understand that, bro. This goes over your head. You're not spiritual enough. Everybody denying the virgin birth, these are carnal brothers. If you notice, everybody that denied the virgin birth, be mainly these brothers that be on the corner cursing people out, saying it's okay to sleep with prostitutes, preaching hate. These are all carnal brothers. Spiritual people have to be righteous people. Paul called Jesus the second Adam. He's the second Adam in more ways than one. I can show you that the creation of Adam and the birth of Jesus got several parallels between them. And for the debate talk for you listening audience, I will do that lesson on the debate talk for you to further prove that Adam was also, in a sense, born of a virgin. His mother was the earth. She was a virgin, virgin earth. His father was God. Jesus was born of a virgin. His Mary was Mary. His mother was Mary. His father was God. This is what these people don't understand. And the earth can take seed. See, people say, well, you know, Adam didn't have a mother. He just, he had a mother or a father. Uh, yes, he did. You go to Luke chapter 3, he called Adam the son of God. And it said he was created from the earth, and the earth symbolically in the Bible is referred to as a woman. So if he used the earth to bring forth Adam, that means Adam came from the earth. In a symbolic sense, the earth is where he came from. Wherever you come from, that's your heritage. Who or wherever you come from, that's your heritage. That's why Josephus, who didn't even believe in the Messiah, called that virgin earth. So Adam, the first Adam, had a virgin mother. And God was his father. And the second Adam, Jesus Christ, had a virgin mother. And God was his father. Paul understood this. This stuff is too high and too spiritual for my opponent. Because they want to preach racism and they want to preach hate. And some of them even want to say now, hopefully, it's okay to fornicate. These brothers are carnal. To understand the spiritual birth, you have to be spiritual. Because you got to be born again of a virgin too, in a sense. And I can show you that. But that's another lesson. That's all for now. All right, this is it, guys. This is it. This is the public Q&A segment where you, the listening audience, will call in with your questions and your comments. Feel free to call in. The number is 646-716-7320. Once you call in, just press the number 1, and that will put you on a switchboard. That will let me know you have a question or a comment. So we're going to go to the people. We want to hear what the people got to say. Once again, do the high volume of callers, and we'll give you guys a limited time to ask your question or your comment. So please, use your time wisely. So let's go to the people. Let's see what they got to say. First person up, uh, three one four six eight zero. You're live on the Bay Talk for you. Any questions or comments? Yeah, I got a comment. And uh, uh, this dude, a war man. This dude is terrible, man. With bringing the text out, man, and then try to jump here and jump there. This dude don't got no common sense on what the scriptures say. And it's crazy, man, that these guys come on here with all this hate messages, and they believe that uh, the Almighty split the Red Sea but can't believe that he can uh, a child can uh, be born virgin-wise. Man, these guys are crazy. And then for the, uh, for uh, for you not to say, this is like me telling my son that, his, uh, that her, her, her dad is not his grandson. Christ was the grandson of of David. You know what I'm saying? That's that's common sense, man. That's his son. That's his grandson. Just like what Lebanon told uh 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 told Joseph, I mean Jacob, he said, These are my kids. These are my children. You know what I'm saying? When he told them that he basically was telling them, them children come from him, from his daughter, them are his grandchildren. And with that I yield, that's all I gotta say. I appreciate the call, brother. Uh right, let's go to Brother Josh first. You wanna reply? Uh, since he says something the brother or war, I'm just gonna pass that and let a war answer that. All right, all right, brother war, you wanna reply? Yeah, uh, make it quick and sweet. That brother blind, and uh, that's his opinion. Okay, he didn't come with no scriptures and no evidence. All the scriptures I pull and direct. I mean, some brothers just blind. That's it. Next caller. All right. Once again, we're going to go to the people. The number is 646-716-7320. Let's press the number one, and I'll add you into the conversation. Let's see what the people got to say about this debate. Uh, 440-320, you're live on the debate talk for you. Yeah, I just wanted to say that I enjoyed the debate. I've never laughed so hard in a de- during a debate. Um, I think that Josh brought out one of the most important Things that this is all spiritual. Adam did not have uh, 
Adam had a virgin birth. Jesus Christ had a virgin birth. It's the same thing. He's the second out. It's simple, but this brother can't see it because he's carnal. It's the same thing like Brother Josh is saying. That's all I got. All right, let's go to the next person real quick. Um, I believe this is a Skype caller, 01182. You're live on debate talk for you. Any questions or comments? 01182. Hello? Yeah, I can hear you. Hello, brother. can you hear me? Yeah. Yes, um, yeah. Uh, I'm enjoying the, uh, the, the debate. Um, this is to Josh. Um, when you read Luke chapter 3, verse 23, it says, and Jesus himself began to be about 30 years of age, being as was supposed. And when you read that word supposed, you went into the Greek and all that bit. But again, we learn that this is under Mary's lineage. And it continues, the son of Joseph, which, uh, a positive phrase, which was the son of Heli. Now, this lineage, it starts from Mary's father, Heli. And who is the supposed son of Heli? That's Joseph. That would make Joseph. That would make uh, Joseph Heli's son-in-law. That's why it says supposed. And you can read this same correlation in Ruth. One second. In Ruth chapter one, verse. 12 and 13. You can read it on your uh, uh, start from 11 to 13. You can read it on your own time. That's all I have to say. Thanks. All right, Brother Josh, you can reply, Brother. Uh, actually, I've heard that weak argument before, and it shows this brother complete lack of understanding of the Greek text as well as simple English. Let's look at it again. Luke 3 and 23. This is called subject verb agreement. And if you can't catch it in the English, you sure ain't going to catch it in the Greek. Luke 3 and 23. And Jesus, stop everybody. Who is the subject here? Jesus Christ. Check it out. Now, see, I have to break this down. It's simple because a lot of these brothers are just simply uneducated. Some of them never went past high school. And when it was time to go to literature class, they were cutting class. It's the truth. I know this. So let me break it down to them. And Jesus himself began to be about a be about 30 years of age, being, who is being here? So the brothers, the brothers, these brothers don't have reading comprehension. They flop down the high school while they slept doing reading comprehension class. Let me start it over. And Jesus himself, what's the subject? Jesus. Begin to be about 30 years of age, being, who being? Jesus Christ. As well as suppose, talking about Jesus Christ, the son of Joseph. That is just telling who Joseph which was the son of Eli. And what this brother was saying was correct, as was supposed, would fall behind Joseph and not behind 30 years of age being. It would say, and Jesus himself began to be about 30 years of age, being the son of Joseph, as was supposed, the son of Eli. So don't try to move stuff around and try to make it say what you want to say. This is simple reading, comprehension, and subject verb agreement. And whenever brothers call in and make comments like this, trying to show me up, only thing they did is show that they probably didn't make it past the ninth grade in high school. That's all I got to say on that. All right, let's go to the next caller. Uh, 312-532. The live one of Bay Talk Field, 312-532. You have a question or a comment? Shalom, shalom. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you, brother. Mm-hmm. Shalom. Uh, I've always called your show. This is Brother Moshe out of Chicago, and I enjoy these debates. But I just have a uh, quick comment. I'm always surprised to hear how learned Brother Josh is, and he continues to refer to people as you Hebrew Israelites, as if he don't know he's not one of us. I don't know if he thinks that's cute or that's his way of separating himself, but the scriptures clearly tell us when Jacob's troubles hit, he will be a part of that. So I think he needs to reconsider when he say you Hebrew Israelites. That don't make sense to me. And he's learned enough to know better. And out of all the education he's got, I'm amazed that he continues to say J-U-S-U-S. Shalom, shalom. Thank you, brother, for letting me comment. Peace. Right, shalom. Appreciate your comment, bro. Uh, let's go to Brother Josh. Yeah, Brother Josh. 
Right. Um, the whole J-E-S-U-S, I don't guess, I guess Jesus, the brother didn't hear the debate I had on that, which I thoroughly showed my opponent that there's nothing wrong with using the name Jesus. And when I say you Hebrew Israelites, he keeps saying you separating yourself. No, I'm separating myself from the wicked one. When I say you Hebrew Israelites, as far as what I am, I don't know what I am. I can prove that I am a spiritual Hebrew Israelite because Paul said in Galatians chapter 5, whoever is of faith, the same is the seed of Abraham, and God said that he would justify the heathen, which means the other nation, the non-Hebrew Israelite, through faith in Abraham. So when I say you Hebrew Israelite, I'm separating myself from the wicked one. Am I a Hebrew Israelite according to flesh? I don't know. I would never make that claim because I can't prove that beyond a shadow of a doubt, and I don't make claims about things concerning Israel, like biological things, that I can't prove. But am I a Hebrew Israelite according to the spirit? Yes. And those are the Hebrew Israelites that I identify myself with, not the ones trying to justify themselves according to the flesh, but the ones trying to justify themselves according to the spirit. Finally, I noticed that the brother didn't say anything about the particular subject, which makes me assume he didn't have any problem with the precepts I presented. If that be the case, praise God. Thank you for calling in. That's all I got to say. All right, Brother Wall, you want to reply, Brother? Yeah, I just want to say this too, right, that uh, number one, it offended me to affiliate me with GMS and all them dudes. I, these guys that are de- trying to demonize me, especially this guy, he always put me in the bag with them. He never asks who I deal with, what I teach, and I agree with him on the way these Israelites teach on the street as far as beating the people down and talking about sisters. I'm not affiliated with those guys, and you keep putting me in the same bag with them because our doctrine us. I mean, what we teach is similar. And I came up with them, but I'm not rolling with them guys, and I resent you demonizing me and putting me in the bag with them without asking me. You don't even know me. But I just, that's why I said that, like what the brother said, he was right about that part, okay, that you keep, you're too wise to be demonizing people. But good. I didn't so, demonize you. I said, yeah, you called me a fool listen, one time. I said earlier, I said, I don't know if a war does it. This stuff has been archived, I said, but I can only ask him. I said that early in the debate, bro. You have a listening problem. You got a memory no, problem. No, you I have a listening that. problem, man. All through the debate, you Israelites, you, that's what the brother was talking about, man. I think the ones, the wicked ones. Everybody knows who I'm talking to. Israelites so, call in so you on this show all the one. time. Huh? I'm talking about doctrine-wise, bro. Doctrine. Doctrine-wise. That's what I'm talking about, doctrine. Okay. I've never seen you on a video cursing anybody out. I've never seen you bad-mouthing women. I've never seen you do that. And I've never said that you do that. I'm talking about doctrine. You got their doctrine. And that's what I'm talking about, the doctrine. No, I got the most high doctrine. That's not no man's doctrine. Well, that's what you think, and I just yeah. let you have that. But I'm okay. telling you, you have the similar doctrine to what they have. Yeah. So don't try to say I'm demonizing anybody. I'm talking about doctrine-wise. That's why when Hebrew Israelites call in who know me and know what I'm saying and understand what I'm saying, they don't get mad at me because they know who I'm talking to. A hit dog or a holler. The last time I came, when you was doing the show, you called me a fool. I, I said, why does this guy be talking to me like that? I didn't never say nothing out of pocket to you. You called me a uh, fool. Actually, the scriptures tell you don't actually, call a man a fool. Actually, the scripture says in the context of calling somebody a fool in Matthew, you need to go back and read that. What it man, means you got to answer for everything, brother. No, I got studies for everything. I got yeah. research for everything. So you need to look into that. Paul called somebody a fool in all right, let's get some more of these callers. <laughs> Once again, the number is 646-716-7320. There's a lot of people got questions, so we got to get to the people out here. All right, so let's go to the people. Once again, the number is 646-716-7320. If you have any questions, feel free to press the number one. Everybody knows it's open season. There's no screening of any calls. You can call in, you know. Uh, use your time right now to have a hold your peace. Once again, the number is 646-716-7320. Let's press the number one, and I'll add you into the conversation. Let's go to the people. Let's see what they got to say about this debate. 315-863. You're live on the debate talk for you. Any questions or comments? Yes, shalom. This is Sound Mind, representing the 315 right of instruction. I just wanted to say uh, good job to Brother Josh for tonight. And um, I just wanted him to to touch on the curse of Jeconiah because some believe that the curse wasn't forever and the curse was for his immediate offspring. And I was just wondering, because they believe that the curse was to Zerubbabel, and then Zerub, after Zerubbabel, there was no more curse. Touch on the curse of Jeconiah, of course. 
like that, Josh. He wanted me to do it? Yeah, if Hello? you wanted him to do it. Yeah. Oh, well, uh, yeah. oh I, I, didn't, I didn't hear who he said he wanted. I heard him say it. I didn't exactly hear who he said he wanted to touch on. I just heard he say it. I, I get his name. Can y'all touch on? You still there, Sam? I guess he hung up. Hello? Yeah, I'm here. Yeah, In the book of Jeremiah, uh, well, first of all, you have to understand that the Messiah's coming was conditional on whether Israel and well, specifically the tribe of Judah, the kingdom of Judah, kept the commandment. When they did not keep the commandment, um, they basically, um, the lineage of the Messiah was basically cut off. And I got a whole breakdown of this on YouTube. And God cursed the seed of Jeconiah. And if you read Matthew chapter... People believe that the curse was only for his seed, like Zerubbabel and Zedekiel, his sons. And then after that, they believe that the curse was gone. I was just wondering well, if... Well, the, the curse reason why you know... The reason why you know the curse... Still I see what you're saying. The reason why I know that the curse continued is because... The Bible says after that there were no more, there were no more be a king that sit upon the throne of Israel from that lineage. So Rubabel was not a king; he was a governor, and he called him a sickness. But he was not a king, and from that day forward, Israel never had their own king. Even when you get down to the Maccabean period and a little closer to the New Testament era, they had on um, the Romans set up the Herodians to be kings. And even when Joseph came on the scene by all rights and privileges, Joseph was actually the rightful heir to the throne of David. He was. But that curse stated that. And if Joseph was the biological father of Jesus Christ, then he would have fell under that curse. So to dodge the curse, the most, uh, the most High came up with the virgin birth. But that curse continued. If you believe that that curse stopped, then show me a king after Zedekiah among Israel, uh, Israelites. That's what I was getting at. Oh, yeah, thank you. That's what I was getting at, too. That's all I wanted to know. Thank you for that, though. It's a key to uh, bring this truth. Praise God. I appreciate the call. Once again, you know the number is 646-716-7320. This is a 35-minute segment, so use your time right now forever hold your peace. Call in. When you call in, just press number one, and I'll add you to the conversation. The title of this debate, The Virgin Birth. My special guest is Brother Josh and Brother Awar. So if you have any questions, you know the number, 646-716-7320. We have some more questions on the switchboard. Let's go to the people. Let's see what they got to say. Um, 315-399. You're live on the Bay Talk for you. Shalom. This is Brother Sha'ala. Can y'all hear me? Yeah, what's going on, Sha'ala? Yeah, I can hear you, brother. Okay, I also want to say uh, peace to uh, you, Brother Sal. Peace to uh, Brother Josh and Brother Awar. Uh, you know, peace to all my brothers in 315. Once again, Brother Josh is doing a great job bringing out his point. He hit every single point in detail. Um, and Awar, once again, is bringing out that same old doctrine, uh, you know, and this is pretty much a wrap for that. And I'm glad, to, you know, I thank the most high for the big talk to you for allowing this to come out. And uh, I just want to make a comment about Brother Awar said about how Christ wanted to be made like unto his brethren. I mean, he was. Because he, he uh, by by coming out of his mother's womb, he was made like unto his brethren. You know, he he was given birth to. So, you know, that pretty much smashes that. And um, that's all I had to say. I appreciate you, my brother. Appreciate your comment. Let's go to Brother Awar. And uh, you want to reply to that, brother? Yes, sir. All these brothers that are calling up, supporting Josh, you are fulfilling this prophecy here. This is uh, Romans 11, verse 8. According as it is written, God had given them the spirit of slumber, eyes that they should not see, and ears that they should not hear until this day. That's them, brothers. Next caller. I love Josh. Uh, Crimea River. Next caller. <laughs> All right, let's go to the people. Once again, you know the number is 646-716-7320. Let's go to the next person. Um, 315-414. You're live on the base talk for you. Hey, shalom, everybody. This is Brother Ben Trey from uh, Syracuse. Shout out to all my brothers in the 315 area. I uh, just want to say great job, Brother Josh. Uh, you really uh, proved your point today. I got a question for the other brother, uh, the Swordsman. Um, in Matthew chapter 1, verse 18, uh, when it says, before they came together, 
you were found with child of, of the Holy Ghost, are you saying before they got married or engaged, uh, she was found with child of the Holy Spirit? Hello? Hello? I hear you. Oh, yeah. Like, I don't know if you was, came on earlier. I expounded on being espoused, okay, where that's a marriage that your wife must be presented as a chaste virgin, virgin, and I proved that in Corinthians 11, okay? The coming together was to consummate the actual physical part of that marriage because Mary was promised to Joseph, okay? The same thing as being betrothed. So that coming together aspect was to consummate the physical aspect. If you read Tobit in the Apocrypha, the sixth chapter, I think it is, it tell you about a marriage chamber. And you got to trace back our old customs of a betrothed marriage. There's a regular marriage where the, the sex took place at that point, and then there's what you call a betrothed or an espoused marriage where it's a set date that they're supposed to come together to consummate the physical part of that marriage. That's what I was saying. Oh. Okay, so because that didn't because that didn't take place, um, are you saying that's basically they did wrong? No, and that's why the angel. Be, huh? Yeah, but what about the next verse that says that Joseph was a just man? Are you saying because that didn't take place, uh, Mary was going to get stoned? No, you didn't hear me say that. I don't add to the scriptures. No, what I'm, I'll, saying I'll, is, I'm asking you. Okay, I'm going to tell you what that is. Okay, he took like that's kind of like when you read the history of Israel. We we made agreements or oath, we stuck to it. Him being a just man, that he took that, he was in that kind of marriage. Well, what happened was before that date, they were supposed to come together physically. He slept with her and got her pregnant, and he was worried about that. That's why the angel came and confirmed, "Fear not to take thy wife." Why? That's why, why the was he worried? Did. Is that a bad huh? thing that he did? Because that's look, like I said, that custom of having a pointed date that you were supposed to. Do that physical part of the marriage. Was All it the a people bad know, thing? Huh? No, it wasn't a bad, a bad thing. That's why thing that he did? So why no, was it he wasn't worried? wasn't a bad thing. Huh? I don't understand. Why was he worried? Because he didn't want to make her a public example. Okay? People talk. Yeah, that, yeah, that don't make sense. But yeah, all right, it ain't well, going to make sense to people like you. Uh, no, it don't make sense because you're saying he was worried, mm-hmm. but at the same time, it's okay. I don't get it. What are you talking about? It said he's being a just man. What do a just man do? Why, why was he a just man? That's what I'm asking you. Meaning that he was very righteous. That's what a just man, go trace just men in the Bible, a righteous man. So when he obliged to anything right, of righteousness, he he stand for it. So what he did was he slept with her before that appointed date. That's all it right. is. Is that a bad, is that a bad thing? No, why was he no. Worried? I don't but know he was worried that it was a bad, it, he was worried it was a bad thing. That's why the angel came and confirmed that don't worry about that. That's your wife. It's common All sense. Right. Now let's go to Brother Josh. Brother Josh, can you go reply, bro? Yeah, it's it's common sense, but my opponent lacks it because it's obvious that what the brother is trying to ask you is, number one, if there's nothing wrong with what he did, then there's no need for him to worry. And if there's something shameful about it, show us in Scripture where it says that if a man consummates a marriage before an actual wedding chamber or ceremony takes place, it is a shameful act in Israel. That's what you were taught. You keep talking about all people's customs, all people's customs. Show us that. Show us. Give us an example. Show, prove, explain. Go to a custom. Give us an example of somebody being engaged, getting their woman pregnant before the marriage actually came together because what you don't understand, bro, is once you get engaged, that's already your wife anyway. You've already paid for her. You've already paid the money. So if you get her pregnant before a ceremony takes place, where's the penalty? There is no penalty. Then what Joseph would have done, because I'm pretty sure if Mary was pregnant, she would have missed a period or something, and she would have came to Joseph like, you know, I'm late this month. What he would have done is say, well, let's go ahead and get married right now. Let me go ahead and just move up the wedding. Let me go ahead and do this. Or let's go before the elders and tell the elders, I slept with my fiancé, which, by the way, there is no penalty for that. There is no reason for you to be afraid. There is no penalty, no shame, nothing at all. You have brothers in Israel that snatching up women and sleeping with them without no type of ceremony. That's in the law. You know, if a man be found lying with a woman who's not engaged, she shall be his wife. It wasn't even telling people that two strangers who were not in relationships 
getting together and getting a marriage. And yet this brother trying to sell y'all the wolf ticket that Joseph was ashamed because he didn't carry out the procedure of a custom that he can't even prove from the scriptures that this. Next call. Give me a break. Brother Wally, your line is over, man. You want to reply real quick? Yeah, I'm, I'm going to tell Josh what this old man told me when I was a kid. Listening is an art, okay? That's why I said the, the angel directly talked to him and came to him in the dream and told him because the angel knew he was worried about that. Joseph was worried about it. It didn't have to do with him trying to appeal anybody, appease anybody else. He was worried about that being a just man. That's why the angel came to him in the dream and confirmed, don't worry about that. Take thy wife. Fear not, okay? I mean, you got to read the story in its context and stop let stop letting that that Christianity blind you, brother. Next caller. All right, right now uh, we look at the time. We're 22 minutes has passed. This is a 35 minute segment. Once again, if you have any questions, feel free to press the number one. The number is six four six seven one six seven three two zero. I see more questions on the switchboard. I'm trying to get as much people as possible, so feel free to call in. Once again, don't be shy. The number is six four six seven one six. Seven three two zero. We have more questions that want to queue, so let's go to the people to see what they got to say. All right, zero one one eight two. You're li- you're back on, brother. Yes, this is towards Josh. You know, this is wrong with our people. If I'm incorrect about something, that's not a reason to call me uneducated, unstudied, unlearned in in, in this thing. That has nothing to do with what I address. I I wasn't talking about the subject Jesus. I mean, I. We can both read that and see that the subject is Jesus, duh. I said the positive phrase at the end of the verse is speaking of he lied. And we know that he lied was the father of Mary. It says supposed because Joseph was the son-in-law, okay? Now, I noticed he didn't say anything about the scripture I I mentioned on Ruth, which is okay. And I'm not going to go disrespect you or call you out of your name. If you've heard the argument before, it's fine. But there's no need there's no need to, to try to downplay me. Come on, man. And in addition, why don't you read Galatians in one second? Because I noticed he went in, he went into Paul and, and, and mentioned about uh, being born a, a, of a, a of a virgin. I, I don't know if it was Romans, but if you read Galatians four and four, it says. But when the fulfill but when the fulfillness of the time was come, God sent forth his son, made of a woman, made under the law made under the law. Does it say a virgin woman there? You're on. Alright. Thanks for your question. Yeah, brother Josh. Uh, first of all, just to circle back to what the brother was saying because he wants to maintain his original argument that it was referring to Joseph being the son in law of Heli. Once again, to all my people who like to actually do studying, go to the Greek, and you will see that, that as was supposed, the subject matter is Jesus Christ. You can even see it in the English. I already showed you, brother, that if you go to Luke chapter 3, let me show you this. Luke chapter 3, and I'm glad your true intentions came out because you want to try to, now Now you want to try to argue the verse birth. Now, now you want to do that, right? Now, this is Luke chapter 3. Let me show you again because you said I'm calling you uneducated. That's not an insult. That's an assessment. You follow what I'm saying? If I can't, if you wrote me a letter and you say, no, you too, let, let me finish. Let me finish. Don't cut me off, bro. I let you talk. Don't cut me off. I let you talk. I let you talk. If you wrote me a letter and you said, Josh, I want to come to your house too, and I know that when you put also, when you say two as an also and you put T double O, but if you write two two O like T O, I'm gonna say that brother is ignorant. That's what I'm saying. That's ignorant, bro. You, at, at your level of education, you're supposed to know the difference between two as in going towards something and two, T double O, which means also. So that's not an insult. You might take it as an insult, but it's an assessment. Now, this is what I'm showing you in Luke chapter 3. You know, because I notice every time I do something and somebody can't refute what I'm saying or they can't get around what I'm saying, here comes the character assassination ad hominem. That's what people love to do. But, yet I sit on this show for Halloween. Huh? Wait, 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 wait. This is Luke chapter 3. Luke chapter 3. Luke chapter 3. I'm going to let you respond, bro. I'm going to let you respond. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Can I read the scripture, please? Look. This is Luke chapter 3. This is what we were talking about. Look. Verse 23. This is the subject verb. It's called subject verb agreement. 
You got to establish that before you start saying who is talking about what. And Jesus himself began to be about 30 years of age. Who are we talking about? Jesus Christ. Being, so in that word says being, you got to ask yourself, who is the being referring to? Like, who are we talking about here? Jesus Christ. Being, as was supposed, the son of Joseph. So that's referring to Jesus Christ. Then if you, if you want to say it was referring to Joseph, it would say, and Jesus himself began to be about 30 years of age, being the son of Joseph, which was as supposed, showing that relation between Joseph and Heli with the supposed, the son of Heli. So for you not to see that, bro, that does imply that you are ignorant in subject-verb agreement. That does imply that. That's not an insult. Now let him respond. Josh. Okay, now respond. Yeah, you respond. Oh, thank yeah. you. Um, again, and I don't know if you have a listening problem, but I said my argument isn't what the subject is speaking of, which is Jesus, and I'm using in a positive phrase, I do know my English, and also maybe you need to go back to school because the parentheses, it doesn't matter where they are placed. If it's in that clause, it's speaking of Joseph. I know it, I know the word being is speaking of Jesus, but when the but when the parentheses is 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 uh towards Joseph, is speaking of him as the son in law. Now, why don't you why don't you talk about? Because it seems like we're not going to agree on this. Why don't you talk about the verse I mentioned in Ruth chapter one, verse eleven and twelve? You're on. Okay, Ruth chapter one, verse eleven and twelve. And by the way, there's no parentheses in the original Greek, so I don't even know why you brought that out. Ruth chapter 1, verse 11 and 12. Yes. Here we go. And Naomi said, turn again, my daughters. Why would you go with me? Are there yet any more sons in my womb that they may be your husbands? Verse 12. Turn again, my daughters. Go your way. For I am too old to have a husband. If I should say I have hope, if I should have a husband also tonight and should also bear sons. Okay. Caller? I want you to break that down. Okay. All right. I'll start it over. And Naomi said, turn again, my daughters. So Naomi is talking to her daughters, or daughter-in-laws. Why will you go with me? Are there yet any more sons in my womb? So she's asking because Naomi was talking about going back to Israel. So are there yet any more sons in my womb that they may be your husbands? Because both of these guys when they were married to had died. Verse 12, turn again, my daughters, go your way. She's telling them to go back to Moab, stay in Moab. And Ruth decided to go with her, and I forget the name of the other daughter, but she ended up, daughter-in-law, she ended up leaving. In Moab. It says, For I am too old to have a husband. If I should say I have hope, if I should have a husband also tonight and should also bear sons. So she was just basically saying, I'm too old to get remarried and have more sons for y'all to marry. That's all I'm getting out of that. If you got some other edification, I'm listening. Yeah, um, I didn't right. have any other edification, but doesn't this, doesn't these two, uh, don't these two verses, um, Compared to Joseph being the son-in-law, because those those children would be son-in-laws, would they not? Yeah, I believe that um, Luke chapter three is referring to the lineage of Joseph. What I'm trying to get you to understand, brother, is that if you go to the original Greek, the the way the punctuation, not the punctuation, but the way the usage and the grammar of the Greek demands. Let's look this up. I don't want to get into. It. I want you to just look it up. And then come right back home, just like you did. You have to say, I'll let you back in the room. Go to the Greek, and it's going to tell you that the subject of it lets you know that it's talking about Jesus Christ when it says being and was supposed. I don't want to do it for you. I want you to look it up and look at the grammar of the Greek. That's why it appears that way in the English. And the parentheses, they added that in the English to let you know as like this is kind of like an editor note, even though it's in the original Greek, like, Oh, I'm talking to the caller, who, by the way, has called in for the second time. If I wrote that out, I would put that in parentheses, who, by the way, has called in for the second time, and then I'll continue my statement. That's what you're reading there. But don't take my word for it. Don't believe anything I tell you 
Go to the original Greek and look up the grammar in the Greek, and it'll tell you who's the subject in question. That's all I'm asking you to do. Now, once again, you're listening to Bay Talk for you radio. The number is 646-716-7320. we got a whole lot of callers here. Let's go to the people. Let's see what they have to say. Uh, let's see, 252-822. You're live on the Bay Talk for you. <laughs> Peace, uh, Brother Sal. Peace, uh, Shalom, to uh, Brother uh, Awa, and to uh, Brother Josh, this is uh, Brother Raheem. What's up, brother? Yeah. You hey, doing? what's up, Ryan? Oh, all right, cool. Um, I basically just wanted to say, um, like, think people are mistaking what Josh is saying, and basically, I was he's not really listening. Like, I want to ask I was, do you believe in the Old Testament and the New Testament, or do you just believe? in the Old Testament, and then I'm going to state what I wanted to state. I believe in both. Okay. That clears it up. Okay. Um, basically, what I wanted to say is um, Mary is the, if you do real research, Mary is the real immaculate conception, not Jesus. Jesus is the miracle birth. Okay? Correct. He He, he was now they like I'm looking at the Hebrew right now, and I think Josh gave a class on it, and we're dealing with the word Alma and Bathula. All right, in the original Hebrew, the uh, church said it's supposed to be a uh, young woman, which they changed in the RSV, and uh, basically um, Isaiah chapter seven, because I'm going to your book, Isaiah chapter seven, verse fourteen. And it says, Behold, a young woman shall conceive and bear a son, and that his name should be Emmanuel. That's supposed to be towards Jesus. Now, whether she's young or not, the whole concept is her having a child without a man. Whether it's young or not, whether it's virgin or not, it says the same thing in the uh, Quran, that she, she says, she has, how can she have a child without a man? So the word version is not in the Quran, but the concept is there. And then it says in the Quran that she was blessed with the Holy Ghost and he breathed the spirit into her. So basically, he is the miracle child. Now, if you said you um, believe in both, the scripture is sitting right there saying, you know, she could see without a child, I mean a man, and I would like for you to un, uh, explain that to me in your understanding when you when you believe both books. Right. I don't know how early you came on to listen to the debate, but I went into the part about the virgin. Okay, I went into Isaiah <coughs> seven. Four, yeah, I went into Isaiah seven fourteen, and I went into the part where it said it used the same thing as a sign. It said a sign, and I asked the question: Was the sign the woman? of this, you know, this virgin birth, or was the baby the sign? And then it mentioned the sign again in the other scripture I pulled, where it showed that the sign was the baby. All throughout the scriptures, it talked about Christ. It wasn't no miracle of this virgin, and I explained the whole concept of the virgin. It always focused on the baby Jesus. It always did, it always did throughout the scriptures. He was the one doing the miracle. It was a, a segment in the Bible where uh, some women tried to give, you know, they said something like, bless the paps that uh, brought you forth, and Christ turned around and said, no, blessed is he that doeth my father's will. So why at that point he didn't say, well, yeah, you know, it was a virgin birth. Nobody mentioned it. That's my point. Christ didn't mention nothing about a virgin birth. The disciples married nobody and married father. Nobody. I, I've, I've not seen it. And, it. and the only thing these guys use to support that is Isaiah seven fourteen. That's all I want to say. Yeah, well, okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, that's all I had, to, like, uh, that's all I basically had to say. I just wanted his point of view because he said he believes in both books, but it does say um, a young woman will conceive and bear a son. His name yeah. shall be Emmanuel, and she wasn't touched by a man. So, it didn't say that. You added that. It didn't say he wasn't touched by a man. It doesn't say that. Where would say that? You so added let me, that. Let, let me ask you this. 
is there, let me ask Josh this. Josh, is there other verses in the New Testament that says she has a child without her being touched? Uh, yes, it's actually in the verse that the brother keeps taking us to. This what he, Let me show y'all. Let me just put lay bare out on the table for the debate talk for you audience because let me show y'all what a war is doing. Let me show y'all. This is what he does. He goes to Matthew 1 and 18. I'm not saying he starts there. I'm just saying this is what he does when he gets here. He said, now the birth of Jesus Christ was on this wise. When as his mother Mary was his spouse to Joseph, then he breaks down his spouse, meaning engaged or betrothed. He got that right. Then he said, before they came together. He breaks down before they came together to mean they actually had to mean to have sex. Which is not so true. They consummated the marriage. Literally says, now look what it says. Before they came together, she was found with child of the Holy Ghost. Now let me show you what he's doing. I'm going to show y'all this is what he's doing. This is what he's reading into it. Now the birth of Jesus Christ was on his wives, when as his mother Mary was false to Joseph, they had sex. But before they consummated the marriage, she was found with child of the Holy Ghost, which simply means the child was going to have the Holy Ghost from the womb. That's exactly. what he's doing. That's what he's exactly. doing. That's exactly what he's doing. He's about somebody added to the text. I've heard this before. This is everything he's reading into that. This is what it actually says. Now, let me show you all what it actually says. Now, the birth of Jesus Christ was on his wives. When as his mother Mary was engaged to Joseph before they came together, had sex, to consummate the marriage, she was pregnant with or through the Holy Ghost. That's what it actually says. So that's all exactly. this brother is doing is reading stuff into the text and then telling everybody we don't understand. We we don't understand, bro. We don't understand why you keep trying to add to what's clearly written. That's what we don't understand, Wall. That exactly. That's that's, that's yeah. all I was pointing out to him. That's all I was pointing out to you why it does say that. So how do you get around it? And that's all I have to say. Thanks, Chad. Let, Thanks, me Chad. Respond. Let me respond to that. Yeah, that Let me respond. respond to that. This is Isaiah. I'm going to give you a itinerary, the prophecy on the Messiah being born, and I'm going to show you where that Holy Spirit is, 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 is expounded on in this scripture. This is Isaiah 11, 1 and 2. And there shall come forth a rod out of the stem of Jesse. This is prophecy, okay? That rod that came out of Jesse, was Christ. I proved that going to matter. Then it says, and a branch shall grow out of his roots. Now, here's another dimension to Christ. And the Spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him. So when the angel was telling her about the Holy Spirit that was going to be with him, we're talking about this. This is the same thing. It says, and the Spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him. The Spirit of wisdom and understanding. The Spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and of the fear of the Lord. There's no scripture in the Bible that said it was the Holy Spirit that put the baby in Mary. There's no way in the Bible to say that. And if it is, show me. Okay, let me let me show you. Yeah. Let me show you. Let's go to Luke chapter three. Here's the question. See, that's how I know, see, that's why I say, man, these people, they lack reading comprehension skills. And while I'm at that, do y'all notice that a war is telling everybody that Jesus had the Holy Ghost from the womb, like John the Baptist. If Jesus had the Holy Ghost from the womb, why does the New Testament say the Holy Ghost descended upon him at his baptism? And then in Luke chapter 4, he said that was the fulfillment of Isaiah 61. If he had it from the womb, why did it descend upon him at his baptism? He must have already had it, right? But this is Luke chapter 3. Oh, sorry, um, Luke chapter um 1. Look what it says. Verse 34. 34. This is a question. See, what y'all have to understand is that when a question is asked, an answer is given. She's asking a question. She didn't ask what the child is going to have. She asked, how will I get pregnant? That's the question. Look what she says. Well, verse, 30, verse 34. Then said Mary unto the angel, how shall this be? Seeing I know not a man. The question is, how will I get a child having not ever had sex? That's the question. How will I get pregnant? Yeah, yeah. Because, the, because the angel told her she's going to get pregnant. So she's asking, yeah. how am I going to get pregnant? That's the, that's the question. Pay attention to the question. This is the angel's response. And the angel answered, responded to the question, and said unto her, this is how you're going to get pregnant. That's what you asked. This is what I'm going to tell you. The Holy Ghost shall come upon thee, 
and the power of the highest shall overshadow thee. The question for war was, how will I get pregnant without having had sex with a man? That was the question. The question was not, will my child have the Holy Ghost from the womb? The question was not, will my child have the Holy Ghost his entire life? That was not the question. The question was, how am I going to get pregnant? And he told us, through the Holy Ghost. You can't get around that, bro. Anything else, you added it. Can I respond to that? Can I respond to that? Yeah. Like I said, you know, when I called you the chubby check or twisted scriptures, I really meant that. Now, when you you see how he just added his own words? All these guys that teach these heresies, they always got to add their own words. Right here, when you read 34, it says, Then said Mary unto the angel, How shall this be, seeing I know not a man? And like I said, when you read the 31st verse, it says shout, S-H-A-L-T, which is the same way of saying shall. So at this point right here, that thing, that conception did not take place. Because every time in history, when you go read about Sarah and Abraham, an angel was sent forth to tell them of an event that was going to happen. It happened. That's why I use the example of John the Baptist. Uh, An angel came to Zacharias and told him the same thing, what was going to befall John the Baptist. And at this point, he's twisting this description and say it still doesn't say what I asked you to prove to me. It did not say that the Holy Spirit impregnated her. You went and added your word. They always do that. Okay? Now, I done read there was three people at this time period that the Holy Spirit, Spirit fell upon. It fell upon Elizabeth, John the Baptist, and Zacharias. And I proved that. But these guys cannot hear or listen or see. Okay? It never said that. This, all these guys that pushed this lie, they got to put their own words in it to support their lie. He added. You just seen him add the words in it. It did not say that. He's convincing you to deceive the hell out of a lot of you guys. Excuse my French. Go ahead. All right, we got some more callers here. We actually passed the 35-minute mark, but I'm going to take a few more callers before we go into the final statement. Once again, I appreciate everybody that called in with a question or a comment. You know, once again, we still got more time, so if you have any more questions or comments, you know the number is 646-716-7320. All you got to do is press number one, and I'll add you to the conversation once I get to you. Uh, for those people that already asked the question, do me a favor. If you already asked the question, just do me a favor and press number one, and that will take you off the switchboard, and that will bring other people up with questions further up on the switchboard. So if you already asked the question, just do me a favor and press the number one. If you ask the question, you want to ask another question, press the number one twice. Okay, uh, let's go to the people once again. Let's see what they got to say. Um, let's see, 314-529. You're live on the Bay Talk for you. Peace, this is Carl Lab. It's Red Dr. Mem, CEO. Just have to put that out there, people. Um, actually, that's what I wanted to hit on, but this is a very simple conversation. Um, Josh just hit the uh, major scripture that I wanted to hit on which uh, that was Gabriel talking to Mary, and Gabriel is the Holy Spirit. We can deal with that another time, though. But if you go back over here to this Matthew 1, and you pick it up at 23, it said, Behold, a virgin shall be with child. Now, I know people going to, you know, we got the intelligent brothers and the concordance and words and stuff. It said a virgin, him though. We're going to take it in the English, or we're not going to take it at all, too, because then you're saying the English is corrupt, meaning the Bible is corrupt. So let's say a virgin, that's a woman that hasn't had sex. Now, how can a woman that not had sex at all end up with a child? Today we know it as artificial assimilation. You know what I'm saying? Somebody planting a seed in a woman. Now, this is what a walk saying people add to the scriptures when they say, well, the Holy Spirit, when it overcame her, she was found with a seed in her, meaning she was assimilated, you know? seed planted in her, not of a man, but over there which the power that came over her. So it said, a virgin shall be with child. You have to deal with that. But then you go to 24, it said, then Joseph being raised from sleep, did as the angel of the Lord had bid him and took unto him his wife, right? 25 is the other key to this conversation that's going on. And knew her not, listen, knew her not, till she had brought forth her firstborn son, meaning he did not have sex or knew her like Adam knew Eve until she brought forth her firstborn son. If we going to say Joseph knew her before this and he planted this seed, then it said knew, not, knew her not again until, you know, because it would have told us that Joseph knew her or had sex with her 
to produce Jesus. That's simple. So you tie that in with that and what Josh just read and uh, Luke where it said, how should I get pregnant and I haven't known a man? She had known a man and she had not known her husband until after she brought forth her firstborn. That's it. In a virgin, she have a child. If she has sex, she's no longer a virgin. That's common sense. I know y'all want to go to Greek or go here or maid and this and that, but either we're going to take this KJV as it's written or we're going to get in here and start adding words, saying people took out words, and start putting in more words, and then we messing with the text. So either we take it as it is or we leave it alone. In a walk, peace, what up, bro? You could say, you know, I'm a part of this uh, conspiracy too, but it's good. You know where I stand. Peace, y'all. All right, peace, man. All right, uh, let's get the response from uh, Brother Josh. Go ahead, Brother Josh. All right, thank you. Um, and I, I just want to uh, thank Carl Alva for calling in and touching on that even more. Because, see, Awar keeps saying that I'm saying a conception had already taken place. I didn't ever say that. You said an old man told you about listening. You obviously didn't take in the lesson. I said when he said, he shall be great. The angel is telling Mary everything this child that she's going to have is going to do. No conception had taken place yet. No sex had taken place yet. So she asked a legitimate question. How in the world am I going to achieve all this and I've never had sex? That was the question. The brother, I mean, I'm not trying to insult him, but his brother lacked reading comprehension skills and he lacked the ability to follow a subject out to an end. If I ask you right now, if a wall of carrying in a basket of apples, and I ask him right now, Hey, Lamar, how many um, apples you got in that basket? He's not going to say, oh, uh, yeah, I got five pairs of pants hanging up on, the, uh, on, my, on my, uh, my clothes hanger. He's not going to say that. You know why? Because he's intelligent enough to know I was not asking him about his pants. I was asking him about apples. Now, if he were to do something like that, I might be like, man, quit playing, man. You don't ask you about the apples. But this is what this brother wants out to believe happened here. Mary asked a direct question. How do I have a baby having not ever had sex with a man? And the angel gave her the answer, and he refused to see the answer. I'm not trying to convince him anyway because he already sat in his way. The answer was, the Holy Spirit shall come upon you. Now, either you believe the answer or you know, or you decide to twist the answer to make it coincide with your belief. Belief or you know, it really doesn't make any difference to me. I think the truth has spoken for itself. You have lost this debate, bro. Everybody can see it. All right. Brother Awar, you can reply. Then we got to move on to the piece. Yes, yes sir. Uh, like I said, you know, like the old man said, listening is an art, okay? When you read, when you read uh, the 35th verse, okay, and the angel answered and said unto her, the Holy Ghost shall come upon thee. Okay, when you read this story, when the Holy Ghost came upon people in the Bible, they spoke things in prophecy. For instance, when the Holy Spirit came upon the disciples, when you read in the book of Acts, what happened? They spoke that everybody heard them in their language. Like I said, when you read the 46th verse and you read on down, okay, it tell you that's the part when the Holy Spirit came upon Mary. She started speaking in a prophetic language, telling them things. Read it. That's what it was talking about. When you read about Elizabeth, same thing. The Holy Spirit came upon her. When you read about Zacharias in uh, 1 verse 68, he did a whole prophetic language on future prophetic things that was going to come to pass. So when the Holy Spirit fell upon people, they started speaking prophetic things. That's what that is talking about. It's not talking about the Spirit going in the womb and creating this baby. It's not talking about that. But he don't want to listen to that. But go ahead. Next caller. All right. Once again, the number is 646-716-7320. So far, it's been a great debate. A lot of good questions from the listening audience and a lot of good comments as well. Once again, we still got a little more time before we go into the final statement. So if you have any quick questions, or, as a matter of fact, if you have any quick comments, the number is 646-716-7320 before we get to the final statement. So let's go to the people. Quick comments. Let's see. 478213. Live on debate talk for you. Shabbat shalom, everybody. Um, this debate is a, a massacre. Um, for, first of all, a war, you said that 
And when Josh asked you about as was supposed, you didn't want to deal with none of that stuff. And then you turned around and said the white man added that in there. Dude, you lost every ounce of credibility that you you had remaining left because everybody knows that. And even in the original Greek, the original Greek text that we had, all this stuff is in there. That's uh, uh, and matter of fact, Josh has videos about all uh, the stuff in Matthew. That was in there because people want to get around because Matthew um, 1 and 24 um, and Matthew chapter 1 is so clear that, you know, the Messiah was born of a virgin that, you know, that people go around and say, well, you know, you got to take out verse 24, 25. And you you got to take this stuff out. That stuff, this stuff was added by people. A brother tried to say that on YouTube that theologians and translators added this in and You're doing the same thing and saying these people added these words to the Bible just because it disagrees with your argument. Dude, you lose all credibility when you do that. And it's sad that you have to, you have to go to that far to say people added in it and you can't prove it. I ain't even asked you, can you prove this? Because I know you can't. It's a fact. Everybody know you can't do it. It's, it's, it's insane. But I'm going to ask you a simple, direct question and um. And, and and I want you to answer this right here. And Matthew one and twenty five. Uh, I'm gonna read twenty four and twenty five. I want you to tell me what this means. It says, "Then Joseph, being raised from sleep, did as the angel of the Lord had bidden him, and took unto him his wife, and knew her not till she brought forth her firstborn son." What does it mean when he says, "And knew her not until he he uh, had brought forth her firstborn son"? And don't say that he didn't know it, because of course he know. It. He was engaged to the woman. He knew who she was. He was, uh, you know, thinking about putting um, putting her away. He knew the woman. So what does it mean when it says he knew her not? And don't tell okay. me this was added because it wasn't. Okay. Uh, what's your name? Aswan. Okay. Hey, Dan Twan, what's going on? I know you down with the brother. Uh, number one, let me address the first thing you said about the supposed. Okay, and like you left a part out what I said. I said we know studying the scriptures that people that put this description together, they use half-truths, and they put what they want in it to support certain things, okay? Now, number okay. two, to answer your question about that, you mean to tell me, let's, let's, let's use you in, as an example. If an angel came to you and you already got your wife pregnant and told you that what's in your wife's womb is of the Holy Spirit, you mean to tell me you're going to have sex with her again? That's what it is. That's the only thing it means. No, he didn't no. sleep. Hold on, bro. Got... Hold on. The conception already happened. Okay. What he, what that basically means is he's not. He did not have sex with her ever again until that born that baby was born. That's all but, it means. Whoa. Okay. Whoa. whoa bro. That's all it means. Okay. That, that's contradiction. Contradiction. How's that contradiction? Go ahead, Josh. You're contradicting contradict yourself, bro. You're contradicting you contradicting yourself. You just you said figure? in Luke. You just said in Luke. That when the angel was talking to Mary, no conception or sex had taken place. That's what, what? you said. And the angel, you said no, we talking Luke, about Matthew's brother. We talking about Matthew. Well, what happened? What, what happened in Matthew happened after Luke because she had to get pregnant first for Joseph to know she was pregnant and then put her away. So the angel came to Mary first, right? Wait, wait, you confused? What, what did you say? Who did the angel visit first, Mary or Joseph? Marry a joke. Wait, you confusing me, man. I said, who did the angel first. Gabriel visit yeah, Mary, first? Mary, it tells okay, you Luke. So, right. so you said that when the angel visited Mary, no conception or sex had never taken place. You said it was all right. future tense. Right, but at that point in Matthew, the angel's talking to Joseph, not talking to Matthew. I know, I, I, I know that, I know that. So okay, there's no so conception. Had, wait, wait, let me show you how I contradict yourself. Because if no conception had taken place, and the angel had already told her that you're going to get a child by the Holy Ghost, why did oh, he just boy. simply say you would lie with your husband and okay. conceive a child? Okay, I know where you confuse that. I know where you confuse that. When you read Hold on, Luke, on a second. Hold on, hold yeah. on for a second. Uh, answer my guy. Reply, but then I gotta, we got to move on. Go ahead. You reply. Uh, yeah, uh, y'all, yeah one, one, one quick comment, though. What does it mean? I'm going to ask another simple question, because when you ask these simple, a simple question is just, all right, just destroy everything. I mean, it's just so funny to hear people ask ask a simple question. What does it mean if, like, I have a son, I have an eight year old child, his name is Javon, mm-hmm. and he is my son, and mm-hmm. he's of me, right? So, what does it mean in Matthew one and eighteen when it says Mary was spouse to Joseph before, uh, and then, um, and it says before they came together, she was found with child 
of the Holy Ghost. What does it mean to be of the Holy Ghost? Not with the Holy Ghost. I'm not saying that he, he was with the Ghost. He said he was of the Holy Ghost. Of meaning from. And we had a whole breakdown on this, uh, on a couple of debates, what of means. So um, it says of the Holy Ghost. What does that mean? You know, I'm going to say this. Y'all should call your school ABL, Absolute Listening Disorder, <laughs> okay? Like I told you. Uh, it come the okay? it I explained the, the part about the Holy Ghost. You guys don't want to listen, man. I explain it to you. You keep asking me the same question man, somebody over get and over. Violin, man. Okay? Somebody Hold on, let me make violin, my point. Man. Josh, let me make my point. <laughs> okay, going back to you, what you said. Now, that's why I brought out the point about shout. Okay, the angel told her what was going to before her in the future. Now, when we read Matthew's the first chapter, that's the con- the conception part. That's why the angel started talking to Joseph. Okay, that's when the conception happened. Okay, the angels telling her about the conception in Luke, and then in Matthew's that's when the conception took place, and that's why he's talking to Joseph. So don't try to trip me up in my words. You should be a politician, brother. Go get a job with Obama, man. You are good. Go ahead. <laughs> I take it as right. a compliment. That just, that just simply means he can't have. All right, we got like four thirteen minutes left on the air on the internet, so we definitely gonna go into the overtime part <laughs> by the time we get to the final statement. So for those people that's uh, listening online, you're gonna have to call in and listen to the rest of the show by dialing number six four six seven one six seven three two zero, or the show is archives. You can always go to the website, which is www.blogtalkradio.com/slash the Bay Talk for you once it's over. You can even download it by looking at the link below the visual screen that says download this episode. So once again, I'm going to take maybe a few more comments from the people, and then we're going to go into the final statement. Quick comments from the people, and then we're going to go on to the final statement. So, pressing number one, if you have any quick comments, once again, the number is 646-716-7320. The title of this debate, The Virgin Birth. My special guest is Brother Josh and Brother Awar. Let's go to the people. Let's see what they got to say. 513-410. You're live on the debate talk for you. Quick comments. Yeah, Shabbat Shalom, Israel. This um, your quarters. Uh, quick, quick comment. Uh, the brother Awar brought out uh, uh, quite a few precepts that never got answered, and this is kind of like redundant and reminiscent of last Friday. And I don't follow any camp; I follow the Most High in Christ. And when I look at the scripture, like Romans chapter one, verse three, which says concerning His Son Jesus Christ our Lord, which was made of the seed of David according to the flesh, that Greek word is G forty six ninety sperma. So I don't understand that you can say this is some kind of virgin birth when the scripture says he was made of the seed or sperm of David according to the flesh. I mean, that's just kind of common sense for me. That's all I have, Brother Shalom. I appreciate you, Brother. Will Josh quick reply? Uh, Yes, I'll reply. Um, It's funny how they want to bring out that it says sperma, but whose sperm? The sperm of David. What they got to do with Joseph? See, David got somebody pregnant who had a child, who had a child, who had a child, who had a child. Mary is also of the sperm of David. Is that inconceivable that Mary is the sperm of David? Your sperm, your seed also means your descendant. Like we say we are the seed of Abraham, that means we are his descendants. We are his offspring. We are his great, 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 great grandchildren. That's all that means. That don't just mean men. So if they say he was the offspring of David, even I mean of David, even if Joseph was not from the lineage of David, I'm just saying even if he wasn't, but he was. But even if Joseph was his biological father and was not from the lineage of David, even though he traced fathers through the um I mean traced lineage through the father's side, that still would not negate the fact that Mary, if she is from the seed of David, that she is the seed of David. She's still one of his descendants. Mary is still one of his descendants, and anybody that comes out of her will still be his descendant, even if you say, well, it go by the father's side. It do. It really does. But you still the descendant of David on your mama's side. You still from his seed. That doesn't change. And people just overlook that. That's all I got to say to that. All right, once again, quick comments, quick comments. The number is 646-716-7320. This is your time to be heard live on the air. Once again, quick comments, 646-716-7320. That's person number one, and I'll add you into the conversation. Let's go to the next person here, uh, 773-952. Live on the Bay Talk for you. Quick comments? Yeah, Shabbat Shalom. This is Brother Mikael Ben Yisrael. 
I was listening. Uh, basically, everything was touched. Israel Doctrine brought it up with the uh, you know the artificial insemination and all that. <clears throat> but this is the only thing I gotta say. Like in verse fourteen, when it said, "The Lord Himself should show a sign that a virgin shall conceive." Right now, if we want to use the definition of young woman, why was the Lord Himself one of His signs? The Lord Himself now. Why would one of his signs just be a young woman getting pregnant? That means his signs are everywhere. We got messiahs all in the hood because half of them 13, 14 years old that's pregnant. Okay, now this is another point. I just don't want brothers to make a mistake and start making it seem as though the most high power is gone. I mean, it's the same most high that formed a man from dirt, made a donkey talk, and made angels write well, hands appear out of darkness and write on walls. But you mean to tell me he can't get a woman pregnant without sex? That's all I have to say, man. Shabbat shalom. Y'all be peaceful. Shabbat shalom, brother. Appreciate your comment. Once again, this is a quick comment section, a <laughs> quick comment segment. Let's call in 646-716-7320. We'll have like eight more minutes live on the air right now, so it's a countdown before we go into the overtime. If you want to hear the rest of the show, you know the number, 646-716-7320. After I get a few more uh, comments, we'll go into the final statement. So if you want to hear live on the air the final statements, the number is 646-716-7320. If you have any quick comments, press the number one. Of course, I'll add you this conversation. Let's go to the next person here. Uh, 404-993. The live on the Bay Talk for you. How y'all doing? Hey, what's up, bro? How you doing, sir? How you doing, General? How you doing, uh, uh Walk? This is Mr. DeAndre. This is DeAndre. I just wanted to uh, say that, just like the last brother that called, it's, it's perplexing to me that these brothers that believe in this, that Joseph was Christ's biological father, they certainly believe in the Most High, but yet they doubt, they deny the power that rule. You follow what I'm saying? I mean, like you said, you form Adam out of the dust of the ground, hang the earth out there in the middle of nowhere, create everything we see with words, but yet he cannot impregnate a woman by his power. I, w- I was going to do this, but I'm going to throw a nice little curveball in here. Right quick in my end. I don't know. A while I'm asking you a question. Do you believe in? Um, I know you believe you read the books that are not in the canon, right? Like you read the apostles, you read like Enoch stuff like that. A while. Hello. Yeah, I think anyway. he can hear you. Yeah. I think he can hear you. Okay. Let me, let me let me let me finish making my my own comment because he said nobody else spoke of the virgin birth um, outside of. Um, the new t- um, um, Luke and Matthew. Well, I have third Paul's third letter to the Corinthians here, right? Listen at this. Nothing to go. It says, "I am not surprised because they were talking about no resurrection." He said, "I'm not surprised that the doctrines of the evil one have moved forward so quickly, for the Lord Je- for the Lord Christ will co- will soon come." He said, "He was rejected by those who have the basic saying." For in the beginning I delivered over to you the teachings I received from the apostles who were before me, who spent their entire time with Jesus Christ, that our Lord Christ Jesus was born from Mary, from the seed of David, when the Holy Spirit was sent from heaven into her by the Father. I mean, I just want to say with that, brother, when you say that, the, the, the Most High can't perform miracles, and that you deny His Holy Spirit, and you, it's actually blasphemy. If whether you know it or not, that you're attributing His power to someone other than the Most High. So, if I were you, brother, I would repent of that and really and, and, and come with the truth. And with that, I say shalom. Uh, shalom, brother. All right, we're counting down. There's five minutes left on the air. <laughs> we have five minutes left live on the air if you want to hear the rest of the show. Once again, call in. The number is 646-716-7320. We're going to get to the final statements. I'm just trying to squeeze in as much people as possible. Everybody know I love the public Q&A. <laughs> so I want to try to get as much people as possible in here. So once again, the number is 646-716-7320. Let's go to the people real quick. Go to the people. Let's see, 845-665, you're live on the Bay Talk for you. Happy Sabbath, Shabbat Shalom, what's going on, my people? This is Brother Stanley, hope all is well. 
Hey, what's up, Stan? Hey, what's going on? Hey, I just wanted to support um, Brother Josh um, and just to, um, maybe he, I, I, I came into the debate kind of late, so I'm not sure if Josh brought this information in already. So um, uh, if he did, it's just gonna, all he's going to do is a repetitive statement so that people can hear it as well again. But um, all, the, all four Gospels had different ways of describing, you know, how Christ came into the scene. The first, the first three Gospels dealt with the, the virgin birth, and, um, but John didn't talk about the virgin birth. John just spoke about that he just came in as God. But what gave him a, a, a real clue in this is shows something that's very powerful. Now, verse, you know, chapter 1, right in chapter 1, it started off talking about the word, was, um, the word of God is Jesus. And you read verse 13. Um, it says here, uh, well, let's start from 12. It says, but as many as received him, him meaning Jesus Christ, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. Verse 13, which were born, not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. Um, and the word was made flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory. The, the, the cool thing about this is it's showing you that the flesh is not what's having the power here, being born of flesh or being born by the will of man. This is not something that's sexual. This is something that is spiritual. So this here is explaining to me, it's giving you a clue that, the, the, um, that those that are born of God are, also, are, are, um, are brethren to Jesus because Jesus is also born of God. And they are all born in the same manner, not of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. So being born of God means it has to be something that is miraculous. See, Adam was called son of God, and he wasn't born of any um, sexual relation. He was created. Scripture says that God can create a, a child in the womb. So if God can do that, and Christ had to be a miraculous child. He had to be a miraculous. But other than that, um, he, he would not be distinct from anybody else. And as far as his birth is concerned, all of God is, is showing you somebody that's coming in by the will of God, not by the will of the flesh, meaning that um, Eve said, um, Adam said, I mean, um, Mary said, hey, you know what, let's just do something about it so we can get this baby going. That, that was the other miracle, miracle babies, like, you know, those that were barren and stuff like that. But this one has to be special. By her being a virgin shows a lot of power in God's power, showing that he's distinct from all the other miraculous births in the scriptures. So I hope that helps a little bit, and that's all I have to say. God bless you all. Um, continue to um, preach God's word. Take care. I appreciate you, Stan. All right, so we're going to go into the final statement, guys. I wish I could get to everybody's questions and comments, but time doesn't permit. We're going into the final statement. Once again, it's like one minute and 44 seconds left on the air on the Internet. So for those of you that want to hear the final statement, you got to call in right now, 646-716-7320. The title of this debate, The Virgin Birth, so far it's been a classic of the great debate as usual. You're going to go into the final statements. Uh, do me a favor. Everybody that uh, had a question that's still on the switchboard, press the number one once again for me. That'll take you off the switchboard. Just press the number one, and that'll take you off the switchboard. All right? Appreciate you. Let's get into this final statement. Let's go to Brother Awar. That's going to be seven minutes each. Let me open up your phone line, brother, and you can go ahead, man. Hold on one second. Hold on. Hold on. Okay, I can hear you now. Go ahead. You hear me now? All right. Yeah, uh, what I gave you brothers out there, you sisters and brothers, was evidence and everything according to the seed, and it's undisputable. Okay, the brother called earlier and said that uh, I blaspheme or whatever. Of course, the Most High can do that. He can do, if he wanted to do that virgin birth concept, he can. He can do anything. But the Most High also says that he's not an author of confusion. And if you were to listen to the, if you go back and listen to what I said, I gave you purpose of the purpose of Christ's birth. And what you guys don't realize and understand, Christ had a cup. He had something that he had to fulfill. And I read it in Romans 8 chapter where it talked about him fighting sin in corrupt flesh. Okay? The corrupt flesh had to be created through man and woman. 
So you mean to tell me that Joseph was just hanging around the house with Mary and just not no relation? And we proved that Joseph was of that line of David. We showed Joseph in the genealogy pool, in the gene, um, the generation of Jesus Christ. What word do you want to get out of generation? Gene. It's a direct link. He's in that generation. And it's undisputable. But this guy still want to fight it down. You know why he want to fight it down? Because he know that if it come out that it's true, he have to go on his little YouTube and snatch down all those lives. Then his congregation will say, hey, man, you've been lying. And they're going to leave him. All these guys I've taught this over these congregations, teaching these lies, they're going to fight to the death to support their lie. Okay? There's a purpose. I read the other purpose, uh, the purpose about Christ being born, and it told you in Hebrews, okay, that he had to understand temptation. That's what you guys understand. Christ had his own cup. He had to suffer himself to be a proper high priest. So he didn't only have to be born of flesh according to Israel's will, but according to his will, um, his cup that the Most High put upon him. Okay? That's what you guys don't understand. Okay? That's a Roman Catholicism, uh, Roman Catholic and Christianity doctrine. Like I said, they're promoting to sever Israel from the adoption. Okay? And as far as what that brother just said, about that, well, I'm gonna leave that alone. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna leave that alone. I'm just gonna continue on with this. But like I said, you brothers need to go and check these things out because there's a lot of heresies going around. I want to read this. This is Colossians two verse eight. Colossians two verse eight. But where lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit? That doctrine is a philosophy. If you look at this guy, a lot of them add their own words. All the guys that called up, they all run with him, okay? That's why they're supporting him, and they try all these dramatic, oh, you miss all you. They're going to support whatever this guy say. That's their leader, okay? Be careful these men don't lie to you and, and, and rob you of your inheritance of being kinfolk to Christ. He never explained Romans 9 to me. He never went into it. That's how they move. They're very crafty. All the scriptures I pulled, he never came back and rehashed, and he even agreed with me on a lot of them. Did you listen to him? Yeah, that's true, and that's his tactic. All the, that's why I study these different guys. And, and he talked about uh, one day he made a statement on another class. I'm always hating on him. No, you're the only one that come up there teaching lies on a mat. Or you the most, uh, you the only one that appear the most that's always up there teaching. That's why it appear like I'm coming at you. No, I oppose anybody that teach lies on this book. Don't take it personal. And if you study him, all this guy do, he never address the lineage. It told you in black and white that Joseph was of that lineage, but he's still fighting. You know why he's fighting? Because, like I said, he's going to have to take down those videos, and he has, he's going to have to submit to his congregation and say, I've been lying to you. He's not going to do that. Pride won't allow him to do that. Okay? It's on the spirit. I mean, go check it out yourself. Okay? Yeah, could the Most High do it? In America? Yes, but in this case, he's not an awful confusion. Like I said before, Christ had his cup. That he had to take, he had to fight sin in the flesh, and he gained royal crowns from that. When you read Revelations, the 19th chapter, it tells you he had many crowns, okay? And he had to defeat Satan. That's the biggest mystery you guys don't understand. He had to war with Satan in the flesh. So he had to be born of a man and a woman, just like you and I. Or it would have been, the, the, the war would have been forfeited. All Satan probably could have told the Most High was like, well, he, he had help by you if it was an immaculate conception. So he came down in the flesh like you and I. That's the purpose of Joseph. You can't get around it. Okay, I done proved it. I done proved I gave you the purpose of Joseph. I gave you the reason. I gave you everything you need. I gave you the the the, 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 the generation. You can't get past that. He totally dismissed it. Because this is the guy's this guy's teaching a false doctrine. And all you guys that believe that and you follow it, you're all antichrist. I'm tell you straight to your face. All of you are antichrist and you're rolling with a Roman Roman Catholic and Christianity doctrine. That's all I got to say on that. I appreciate that. Let the people know where they can find you on social media. Yeah, uh, like I, like you told you, I got a show coming up called Gates. I'll be on that. If you want to hit me up, my email address is one man army three 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 four at gmail dot com. I teach anybody anywhere and go on any forum and break bread with anybody. I don't, I don't, I repeat, I'm that, not, repeat that. Repeat that email one more time. Oh, my email is one man army. That's O N E A R M Y three three four at gmail dot com. Hit me up. 
We can rap. I break bread with anybody. I'm not puffed up. All right, Swartzman. Appreciate you being a special guest, brother. All right, so now we're going to go to Brother Josh with his uh, final statement. That's going to be seven minutes, and after that, we're going to pretty much wrap up the show. Once again, it's for another classic. I appreciate everybody that's listening in right now to Overtime, part of the show that called in, and I appreciate all of your support. Once again, go to www.facebook.com slash debate talk for you to keep up with the latest on debate talk for you. All right, so let's go to Brother Josh. Let me open up his phone line, and go ahead, brother. Thank you, Sal, and thank you, everybody, for um, tuning in and hearing this debate, and even um, a war for um, challenging me. Uh, I just find it funny how the brother just put his whole little spiel out there. I mean, anybody can see that he's agitated because we always say on Debate Talk for you, let the audience be the judge and jury. I just find it perplexing that Sal, on a weekly basis, report the number of listeners that are listening, and the number's in the tens of thousands. And when they archive, it goes into the hundreds of thousands. Does this brother really think I got hundreds of thousands of people that are part of ABT? These brothers that called in, only two of them out of the tens of thousands of listening are part of ABT. Everybody else, they doing their own thing, bro, so you don't know what you're talking about, bro. So don't get mad at me because the crowd believes me over you. They can see that you're ignorant, unlearned, and full of philosophy. Anybody who would be debating on debate talk for you and get pushed into such a corner that they have to cry and say, well, the white man put that in there. Come on, bro. The debate was over when you said that. So I asked you to prove that. You said you couldn't prove it. That is a cop out. That's a punk move. You've already shown people your true colors. Anytime somebody trump you, that's what you're going to do. Oh, somebody put that in there. Hey, if we listen to you, anything you don't agree with, somebody put that in there. Go on with all that, bro. You come out, so I'm afraid that if, I, if I'm proven wrong, I had to take down some videos, now I lose some followers. Again, how many followers do you think I have? I mean, a lot of you guys who debate me, they got this crazy misconception, like, oh, Crepto Dollar with hundreds of thousands of people in this big old building. Dude, I teach every Saturday on Power Talk. My ministry is strictly online, and on a good day, a good day, 35 people will show up to listen to me. So don't try to paint this. Um, this old extravagant picture of me standing before multitudes of hundreds of thousands of people and they all just beckoning to my every word. Give me a break, bro. The reason why the debate talk for you audience mostly supports me, because not all of them do, but mostly supports me is because I earned their respect. You should try doing that sometime, bro. Those are, I'm giving these people nothing but my understanding of Scripture. That's all I've given them. I haven't paid them off. I don't have no big building for them to come or a congregation for them to be a part of or any type of community-based program for them to say, well, I like ABT because they reach out to the community. I have nothing to give these people but the uncut word of God. And that and that alone is why they respect me. And your little fragile ego can't handle that, so you want to lash out at anybody that believes me. Bottom line is this, bro, the virgin birth was proven. You keep coming out Jesus being born in the flesh as if you believe it in the virgin birth, Negate him being born in the flesh. Scripture don't say that. If he was born in the flesh, that other mother, he was still born in the flesh. It does not negate that. He still suffered and dealt with like passions, as it tells you in the book of Hebrews. So don't try to come up with your own philosophy. Hey, if he was born of a virgin, that would mean that, uh, you know, he couldn't be tempted as we were. What, how do you think of that? Adam didn't have an earthly mother or father, not a literal earthly mother or father. He was still tempted to sin. So that is stupid. You see how they contradict themselves? Adam didn't have, have a mother or a father, not an earthly mother or earthly father, and he still failed. So how do you figure that if Jesus just had one, that's unfair? Give me a break. Your philosophy is flawed and outdated. Only thing you're trying to do is keep us under this false, fake, racist, black Hebrew doctrine, and you're getting mad because the younger generations are starting to wake up to this folly and see that we ain't falling for that no more. And people like me, people like Minister DeAndre, people like Prophet 613, people like the Rod of Instruction with Ben Trace, or Allah, and Sound Mind, all of these people are starting to hand y'all back that nonsense that y'all have been shoving down our throats since before we were born. And you can't deal it. Face it, bro. Your time is up. The falsehood is over with. God raising up his people. You might want to pack it up and take that to the elders who are in your age group and up because we ain't falling for it anymore. We give you all your crap back. 
We give you your racism back, your denial of the bird to bird back, and your only Israel to be saved back. We taking it and we giving it to you and telling you what you can do with it. And y'all know what I mean when I say what you can do with it. Don't get mad at me, bruh, because the people are intelligent enough to believe this truth. Don't get mad at me because nobody wants to hear you. You challenge me, bro. Ain't nobody on the base talking of you calling you out. You know why? Because they don't even think you're worth it. You know what I'm saying? If people challenge you, it's because they think you're worth talking to or they just want to prove you wrong. So you can go ahead with all that. You already cried. You already cried. You already submitted. You already raised that white flag when you said the white man put that in there. Anybody listening already was like, oh, that's a cop-out laugh. That's a cop-out line. But let him have shown me something. They don't have shown me anything, and I had used that same line or said something similar to it. Oh, somebody put that in there. First thing that came out of his mouth, where, where did I say that at? How do you know that? But when he does it, it's supposed to just fly. Your time is over, bro. Take your falsehood and take it on any other forum because every time you come on debate, talk for you, you call in on any of my debates with any kind of nonsense. And I promise you, just like I did tonight, I will continue to smash you. Until you just finally realize that you are out of our league. And when I say our, I mean me, Prophet 613, the brothers that brought up instruction, and Andre the Giant. Go on about your business. Go on about the striking business. That's all I got to say. All right. Once again, it was another classic debate. Debate Talk View Radio. Once again, you can go to the archives and check out the show by going to www.blogtalkradio.com slash debate talk for you. You can even download it. Once again, below the visual screen, you'll see a little link that says download this episode. I recommend that you go to iTunes, go to the podcast section, and type in the search box Debate Talk for You, and that way it automatically downloads to your computer, your iPod, or whatever you have there to download the show. Uh, Brother Josh, you can also let the people know where they can find you on social media. Brother Josh, you hear me? Uh, yeah, yeah, can you hear me? Yeah, I got can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, yeah um, let me know where they can find as you. I, I appreciate it, Sal. As I said earlier, um, I'm on Pal Talk. We're in the religious and spirituality section. I don't know why I'll be forgetting this stuff, but we're in, we have Sabbath class or Shabbat class. Every Saturday, anybody listening is welcome to come. We have it at 4.30 Eastern Standard Time, so, you know, adjust your settings. I know some of y'all in the U.K. are far ahead of us on time or behind. I forget which one, but you're welcome to come. We've had people from the U.K. tune in before. I would love to see you there. It's, um, like I said, we're, in, we're on Pal Talk. Religious and spirituality section in the Christianity section under the name Absolute Bible Truth. Right now we're starting at 4:30, but after daylight saving time, due to the fact that the sun will be setting earlier, we're going to start at 3 o'clock. Anybody is welcome. And like I said, on a good day, we have 35 people. I don't know why this brother trying to make it sound like I just got. I wish I did have that many people listening to me on a regular basis, but you know it ain't even like that, bro. I'm just a voice crying in the wilderness. Just like him, meaning relatively few people are listening to me. So I appreciate that, Sal. Help keep the show on the air. If you want to help, you can send your donation through PayPal. The email is debatetalkforyou at gmail.com or through Cash App, dollar sign Sal Showtime. Thanks for your support. <laughs>